Good evening, everyone. Welcome in. Feel free to share the room out, let everyone know that we're live. And if you want to join me up here on stage, just tap on the mic in the bottom left. I see Zach's in here. Also, I think uh, Plan C will be joining us tonight, waiting on Scott to join us. And then I did message Tal to see if she had any time to come in and chat. Once again, share the room out, let everyone know that we're live, and uh, yeah, join us on stage. Zach, what's going on? Oh, man, fucking brutal. Excuse my language, but Jesus. It's uh, been a very couple days for everybody, and we're trying to make sure all, everyone gets their, their loan serviced, and uh, you know we help everyone out as best we can here. We, we hate doing liquidations, and we do everything possible to prevent that, so... Please, if you have a loan margin call, contact loans at celsius.network. Uh, if Tal can make it in later tonight, that would also be very cool. But, um, yeah, just br- really crazy stuff yesterday and the whole UST breaking its peg. Um, still struggling to get back up. And, um, and yeah, just wild, wild markets all around. Yeah, I think your verbiage is dead on, man. It's It's brutality out there. And uh, Plan C, welcome in. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going well. I would love to uh, hear your opinion on not only the market, but what's going on with UST. I did see your post here before I started yeah. on uh, it possibly being a coordinated attack or something. I'd be curious to hear what your opinion is on that. Also, yeah, in- I- invest oh, go answers. Ahead. Go- Invest Answers just um, brought up one of your tweets, Pansy. I don't know if you saw that video he just uh, did, but he mentioned you in his uh, in his video. Oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I really like his content. I think he's one of the better YouTube channels in the space. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I have no – I don't really have any clue uh, what actually happened. It just it just feels like a coordinated attack. I mean, and it, it seems like there is a reason to do so, and there's people that can profit from it. So anytime – you know, you have large money. It, it just, it, it seemed inevitable, actually. Like, now, in retrospect, it's obviously easy to, to, to see these things. But, you know, when you think about it, I mean, what they were trying to do and everything or what they're trying to do is, I mean, there's a lot of big players in the traditional system and within the crypto, you know, within crypto that are competing with them. And, and it just, yeah, it just seems like there's, there's an avenue to attack it. So it sucks. I mean, I hope, you know, it's obviously affecting, I'm sure, a lot of people. So, yeah, it's uh, not not great, and uh, I hope it does repeg somehow. But doesn't look doesn't look that good. It, last night it was actually I was watching it, and, and last night it was looking like it was going to. It went over nine over uh, ninety cents, and it was on its way, and then just yeah, couldn't get there, and now it's like in the eighties again. So no idea, no idea if it was coordinated or not, but it definitely feels like it was. Yeah, they're really struggling right now. Uh, I remember back in the day when Tether for the first time broke its peg and it was such a huge deal, but I think they brought their peg back in a matter of hours, if not definitely like in a matter of like 12 hours or so max, this feels way, way different than that. Like they they are having so much trouble getting it back. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of people that are, you know, now shorting it and doing all sorts of other things because, because last, uh, or I think it was uh, last summer it it broke uh, the peg and went to like, 94 cents or something and then i think during COVID it went to like 85 cents so you know it's had these little like 5 15 cents off pegging situations but this is like i mean totally different it feels like like you said now what do you feel about what's going on with bitcoin what are you seeing like on chain what are your what are your metrics or data you're looking at yeah, I mean, I, I've been getting into uh, like the order book flows. It's it's kind of um, a great uh, thing to complement on chain because on chain is really for higher time frames and and yeah, like more the macro outlook and the health of the network and things like that for calling like macro bottoms and macro tops. But when it comes to like the day to day price action, I mean, derivatives and and the order book flows are really where you can see like the battle taking place. And I, I got this cool software where it, it combines five uh, major exchanges and liquidity, and you can see you know, where all the levels are and you can see like the market buying. But yeah, it was just relentless yesterday, like watching in real time, seeing, because it'll actually calculate the delta of, of the people market buying versus placing limit orders. So actually just straight up selling, right? Not even bothering just hitting the sell button. And yeah, you could just, it was just, yeah, it was relentless. Obviously price was going down, but 
it was looking like we were going to break through 30,000. Like the way it was selling down, I was just like, there's no way 30,000 is going to hold here. And there was, in my opinion, like I'm, I'm just new to this, but with the, uh, with the order flows, it didn't look like there was enough of an actual wall to hold there. But what happened was it's, they started getting a lot of uh, market buying. So basically people didn't have limit orders in, but they just started buying. And, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to hold it or not, but yeah, it, it doesn't, it didn't seem very promising yesterday. That's all I have to say. I don't, somehow it's, it's held for now, but I mean, yeah, most likely we will go lower at this point. I, I really don't know, but it just seems like we will. I was like uh, that meme of Matthew McConaughey with a cigarette in his mouth watching as we broke down and um, on FTX, at least we broke to like 29,800 for a short period. And I was like, Oh snap. And then, um, and then it recovered and has been bouncing just above 30 cents. But um, yeah, what a crazy experience just to that precipitous drop was, was absolutely gut wrenching. Did you see Willy Woo's uh, post plan C about how 84,000 Bitcoins came out of uh, hodling positions and were dumped or whatever? I didn't see that specific one. Um, but yeah, there's, de- there's definitely some coins that are could, like, it's interesting because you have these on-chain metrics. You have one called uh, illiquid supply, which I mean, all it really means is there's no history or really low history or no history of, of the person holding those coins selling. But they can be brand new market participants. So someone could have just got into the market and they're considered illiquid if they've never sold, but they just bought. So to me, illiquid supply is not really that great of a metric. And we saw we actually saw that uh, metric drop a, a decent amount um, during this event. But what didn't drop really at all is the one plus year uh, uh, supply not, uh, not moved. So they, the kind of like one plus year hodlers, um, it didn't, they didn't really drop at all. So yeah, there wasn't really, there was definitely a lot of selling from people that are like new, new in the market. I, I saw huge amounts of selling between people that were in, in between one month and six months. There was a lot of selling in that range, mostly um, for sure. But imagine you bought your Bitcoin three months ago and it's just gotten decimated in value, you know, like, especially if you're new to the space and you buy your Bitcoin just in the last few months, this would definitely uh, shake out a lot of hands. Yeah. The one to six months, like they're quite a bit underwater on average. And so, yeah, they're just, they, they just lost confidence, right, with the macro situation. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough for someone that's that new in the market at this point. I mean, it really does take a year for people to gain confidence, go through some of the ups and downs. And, yeah, very hard, t- very hard position to be brand new in crypto right now, I can only imagine. But, yeah, the, the longer-term people are not selling, obviously. But at this point, I mean, we need, we need some buyers. We need people coming in. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, it could definitely go lower at this point. Come on, ETH Merge. I think we got to wait another 18 months for that. But uh, yeah, so uh, obviously Luna had to sell a bunch of their Bitcoin too in order to try to save things. Did you did you notice any of that? Yeah, they went their balance dropped from over 80,000 to I think 26,000. It went from 82 or something to 26. I made a post about it. But yeah, I don't know if they've actually sold all those all those Bitcoin, but their balance, like their actual wallet is is down significantly from like 80 to 80 to 26. But yeah, they could have a whole bunch of coins that they haven't actually sold that are sitting there waiting to sell. So that's the question is like how much of those coins that they've moved at this point have they actually sold? So, I mean, I hope they've sold all of them, I guess. I, I don't know what, what to hope for. I mean, uh, if you're a UST fan, I mean, you probably hope they haven't sold them. And then if you're a Bitcoin, you know, I guess you hope they have sold, but either way, yeah, not great. If you guys are just joining us, feel free to share the room out. Let everyone know that we're live. And if you want to join us on stage, be a part of the conversation. Or if you have any questions related to Celsius, we'll be happy to help you with that. Feel free to do so. Just wanted to ask you guys a question. Like, I mean, how, like, I I don't know how much you're able to talk about this, but yeah, I was just kind of wondering um, how much uh, this UST event has affected Celsius, if you're allowed to speak at all about that. Like, have they lost funds because of this? Or, you know, because I I don't know, do they have any kind of directional... Because I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, they shouldn't be affected by this, right? Because they, all they have to do is deliver the coins back to the people. It does, if it drops to 80% of its value, it's not their fault. Right. That's the beauty of Celsius' is business model. It makes us very stable and even in wild volatility is that we don't owe – we're not taking directional risk. So we just owe the coins back, um, you know, just the coins. We don't owe a specific value of coin. It's just the coins themselves. So even in cases of extreme volatility um, – you know, if Bitcoin would drop to 10,000, right, we still have all that Bitcoin is just worth a lot less. And, and that can always be returned to users. 
But did Celsius take a hit at all when it comes to lending to do with Anchor or anything like that? Like, there's nothing that you guys are. Again, you're probably not allowed to speak of speak to it. If they yeah, did, I but... haven't. I haven't heard of anything. Um, again, I I'm not directly involved with those operations, but um, we'll ask around and maybe we could talk about it on the AMA if something did happen. I I haven't heard of anything though. Tecmo, welcome in. What's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? I uh, I don't know if anybody else is on the Milk Road uh, newsletter uh, that they distribute out, but they and I can't speak to the veracity of all of this. But he, the the newsletter determined like laid out the play by play of like what happened, like with the whole uh, peg attack, um, in terms of and what he basically broke it down as is that they cleared out liquidity pools on Curve. Um, then they started dumping UST, which caused other people to dump UST. And then the backers of UST, like Jump and LFG, started selling the the, the Ethan Bitcoin that they bought to to back it, which was exactly what they they being apparently Citadel uh, wanted because they were shorting Bitcoin. And then when Bitcoin went down, that then obviously they win. Um, and then per the again, I can't determine the veracity of this. This is just in the newsletter. Uh, but then it said over 50% of all funds were withdrawn from, uh, anchor in 48 hours. Um, and apparently, uh, they had, uh, LFG had 4 billion in crypto reserve assets. Now they have no Bitcoin left, uh, only 195 million in other crypto left. So it just seems like a coordinated thing apparently by Citadel, uh, to, to short Bitcoin. Um, so not really, uh per se, an attack on Luna or UST, uh, but just a roundabout way for them to make money, if any of that is true. that's just, I was just wanted to share what, what was in the newsletter. It's actually a coordinated attack against Bitcoin in a lot of ways then, because they were shorting it. I mean, it, kind well, of an sure. attack on Bitcoin, yeah. you could say, but yeah, I mean, attack on the space to make money, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not like they were attacking Luna or UST. Of like, It wasn't like they cared about Luna or UST. They were attacking the the bitcoin the manipulation of bitcoin trying to short it and 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 game it that way yeah it's more the fragility of of uh this new system that you that uh usc and terra are building yeah so but anyway i'm you know personally i have zero qualms with the future of bitcoin and if i if it gets into the 20s i'm all for it and i'm happy to grab some at 20s and then hodl for many years did you apply to McDonald's? I uh, already uh, had an application on file, so um, you know it's it's all good. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Thanks for coming up, Tecmo. Cellcat, what's going on? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, like as you guys said, like this is why I love uh, this is why I love Celsius is because uh, you see a lot of these other exchanges, right? And it's 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 pure greed. It's not do good, do well. And so if you're not worried, worried about sustainability in any capacity, right, um, whether it's Binance or whatever else we've seen in the past, and unfortunately, these entities that, that have all this crypto, you know, you get a, you get a complacent user base, they're, they're taking out their leverage, whatever, maybe they're not serving you as much as they could. And then you see the big institutions come in, they say, hey, we want crypto at this price, and so they're like, well, we, man, we don't got anything. We don't got anything to give you. There's a liquidity shortage here. All of our customers got it, right? And uh, yeah, that's just what starts happening. People start getting liquidated through whatever mechanisms they can manipulate it. And uh, it's very unfortunate. But that's why I like to be with Celsius because there's no economic incentive. And you guys have uh, like an amazing amount of crypto. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, but you see these exchanges and these institutions kind of just working together. Like a lot of these things are off the grid, right? And they're not do good, do well. It's a lot of desperation um, and acting in this kind of survivalist mentality, you know, because when crypto drops like that, you know, think about how much pain those exchanges are really in if they're not worried about sustainability. And then you got an institution that comes up to you and says, hey, man, I want to start buying at this level. Well, you're, you're about to start shaking hands with the devil and you're going to do whatever you can to stay alive. So I think that that's what was going on. 
Um, we got an inverse head and shoulders pattern plan out though. And we've actually, uh, we're, we're at the exact level we should be right now. Um, so we're gonna start uh, moving upwards pretty quickly. Um, it's just that these kinds of events happen because when the large institutions come in and they want their cut, they will do anything. It becomes very cutthroat. And again, that's why I'm with Celsius is you, you, you don't have to worry about that, right? Uh, there's a lot of places that it'll be cutthroat and you'll just get liquidated, right? And that's wrong. And that's why, you know, this is your home for crypto. And uh, we, we don't see that kind of stuff. You know, of course, there's, there's instances where it, where it happens, but it's, it's never a case where Celsius, you know, wants to work against the user. It's always do good, do well, always sustainability, right? And uh, yeah, just makes me very grateful because I've just been seeing what's been going on in some other uh, communities and dang, it can be, it can be brutal. That's a good point there, Selcat, and um, about the liquidations. We don't profit off of that like a lot of our competitors do. So uh, the last thing we want is for someone to be liquidated because then they're out of crypto and it doesn't benefit anyone to lose them and have them never come back. So uh, as much as we can, we like to work with the individual. And uh, But uh, if they don't communicate, then uh, we might have to do what we have to do, but we like to communicate with them and try to work with them. And speaking of your home for crypto, I had a conversation with someone today and, and I was saying, you know, Celsius was born in a bear market. So um, speaking about a home for crypto, we're the safe place to come home to, you know, we're that lighthouse. That's how I envision Celsius. And uh, with the no fees, that's going to make it a lot better for everyone, especially in tough times, to know that you're paying as little fees as humanly possible. And with Celsius, it's no fees. So all around, we are the home for crypto. And uh, I just wanted to piggyback on what you said, Cellcat. Very good comments there. And uh, yeah, and I think we'll weather this storm just like we did the last one. Yeah, I want to echo that part that Scott said about the loans. Uh, communication is everything. So I know, um, you know, it can feel discouraging or feel a type of way when, when a loan gets a margin call, but um, be sure to, if you do get a margin call, email the loans team, let them know, hey, I see it and I'm trying to do this or I'm trying to do that in order to uh, get it resolved or add some sort of collateral or return some of the principal in some way. Uh, but please communicate. That's the really the big ask. And, and that's also why I recommend the 25% LTV, right? Celsius ain't out here trying to gamble off of whether or not you're going to go 10x, 100x leverage, right? And the, these these exchanges that are offshore, they, they benefit off that stuff, especially in the hard times. And who's going to come save them, right, when they got no one to lean on? Uh, and you see, you know, all these orders that were ready to go, at these specific levels around that, you know, uh, $30,000 level, you know, me and uh, the financer were watching it and yeah, it was a lot of manipulation. Um, the good thing is the institutions are here. They're, they're absolutely here. They're watching, they're ready to ape in. Uh, but first, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna start playing some games. And uh, that's why I'm always glad to be with Celsius. Cause I mean, look at all this other stuff that's going on. There's, there are so many other, uh, projects right now that are really hurting and they don't have the kind of community we do. One uh, technical thing too, speaking of margin calls, because I, I recently got a few margin calls uh, in the past few days and I added collateral. And when I did that, uh, three of my loans, it updated immediately. The last loan, it did not. So I was watching it, watching it, and it still gave me the alerts that I had a margin call but I added the collateral, right? So it took about a half an hour for this last loan to update. So don't freak out because I started to almost freak out. I was like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I, I, I paid my money, right? So I, those thoughts were going through my head. But then I said, just relax, refresh the app, you know, go make a sandwich, <laughs> you know, come back. So I did. And a half an hour later, it updated and everything was fine. So because uh, I know in these times, things can get a little stressful. So just be patient with the app. Uh, I don't know if it was a lot of people accessing it at the same time or what was going on, but 
All the other ones did it quickly. This one took about 30 minutes. So um, just just be patient and it'll update. What kind of sandwich was it? <laughs> Good old PB&J, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> nice. Uh, thanks for coming up and sharing your thoughts, Cellcap. Norman, you're up next. What's going on? Hi, gentlemen. Uh, condolences to all of us for the price drop that we've had in the last a week or so, a little more. Um, my question is, um, I know that some people were putting uh, UST in there to earn at a higher rate, and I was reluctant to do that. I was not a fan of UST. I guess if you remember the last discussion, I don't remember, but a few UST, weeks ago. But UST has a higher rate, Norm. I'm surprised you had the... Uh... Yeah, 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 but... <laughs> If you remember when you guys were talking about UST, you're right. I'm all I'm all after the yield, but it's a, I'm not after the yield in other than the safe ones, uh, and that's why I'm with Cel. I know Celsius is safe. It may not have you know the DeFi some of the DeFi rates. And my 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 point is that um, my question is that did did anybody that that did put a lot of uh, their coins into uh, their UST into Celsius, did that? Did anybody get in any of those impermanent losses or any issues like that? So I don't think you'd have impermanent loss. That's usually on a, a DeFi exchange. But right now, because the peg is down, um, each UST is not worth a dollar. So you're still getting the same amount of UST coins, but their value is not at the peg. So... You know, if you were to trade them out right now for whatever you can trade them out for, you would take a loss because you bought it for a dollar and then traded it for 80 cents. Um, If the peg is restored down the road, then it'll be dollar. You'll have all the tokens that you accumulated in Celsius or anywhere else. I see. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And I expect it will come back to the $1 mark, but I think they're going to lose a lot of... uh... Even though Solana didn't lose much for going out of network, I think they're going to lose a lot for this one because it did kind of surprise people pretty quickly. Yeah, the, the confidence game here will be big long term, and I think we're waiting for some messages from Do Kwan, um about this. Well, he says he's I, recently. I saw his tweets. He says they're they're working on it and they're gaining. Uh, uh, you know, they're get they're getting there, and I did see on the tweet that Citadel. Uh, suggestion what they had done that uh, someone had mentioned but uh, I was not a I was not a fan for that and I didn't go for it because I just couldn't imagine the fact that they were using that you know it's UST is supposed to be a stable coin and it was using Bitcoin as collateral now that to me is like an oxymoron and it kind of proved itself somewhat in these last six days Anyway, that was my thought. There's another oxymoron out there that I'll bring up that kind of rubs people the wrong way, but the oxymoron is burning something that's of value. How can that be good? That's, <laughs> I'll leave you with that thought. A little bit of a troll there, but uh, you know, I do that a little bit occasionally. So I'll let you guys go. Thank you for having the, uh, the courage to talk about all this stuff in these down times, and uh, I'm sure we'll get back there. Thanks. That's what we're here for, Norm. And you'd be surprised. I mean, all the stuff that Tether's been through and, and you know, Binance had a gigantic hack at one point. As long as they remain transparent and they fix the issue, you'd be surprised how people soon forget. Yeah, I agree. The transparency is, is so important. That's part of the reason you guys are doing well. We write the book on it, Norm. Thanks for coming up. Reagan, you're next. What's going on? Hey, Josh, Scott. Just wondering um, if you could comment at all about Celsius maybe helping the LFG group um, fundraise to help um, uh, the foundation out. Cheers. Uh, Jason just sent me that. Um, you know, I have no idea. It's an interesting concept. Um, you know, we'll, we'll bring this up to the team, but um, that, that would be an interesting concept, being us a huge liquidity provider if – um, that fits in our risk management and other models, but uh, very interesting opportunity here. 
Yeah, I think so too. I think it also just sort of goes to show, you know, since UST is the only, well, not the only, but, you know, it's an algorithmic stable coin. So it's, it's, it's a lot harder to keep a peg, but that's kind of how, you know, a free money, free market should be. So it's, it's going to come with that, those sort of problems to, to fix, but that's the, the holy grail if they can. Um, and also, you know, not financial advice, but if you, if you do believe in UST, it's on discount at the moment. Cheers. Yep, good point. Thanks for coming up, Regan. Uh, guys, feel free to share the room out. Let everyone know that we're live. Like usual, Alex should be joining us around top of the hour. And if Tal has any time at all, I know she's busy right now, she'll probably pop in. Uh, but yeah, feel free to join us up on stage. Just tap on the mic in the bottom left to do so. Make sure you're on mobile. Uh, Z Sean, or Zeshin, what's going on? Hello. Can you hear me, guys? There you go. Yep, go for it. Hi, how are you guys? Nice to see to all of you. I just want to uh, know your views about this Citadel issue. Uh, they're saying that it was a coordinated attack. They wanted to short Bitcoin, but uh, don't you think they're using this as a scapegoat? Uh, wouldn't they be better off shorting Luna instead for profits instead of Bitcoin? Thank you. I mean, it's all speculation right now. You know, everyone is always looking for a reason of why markets go down like this. Um, you know, I, I, I have no other opinion on the matter. It's complete speculation, but they might not be allowed to hold Luna. They might only, as, a, as an institution, like they might only be allowed to have a position in Bitcoin, right? I have no idea if that's true, but just speculation. Yeah, the even if it were true, uh, Zeshin, or it become, ends up being true, it's it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a coordinated attack specifically on uh, Terra or anything like that. Maybe it was just to try to get Bitcoin down, and then you know it ended up being uh, collateral damage or whatever. Does anyone remember these kinds of manipulation events happening a few years ago, and we called them Bart patterns? And it kind of looks like an upside down Bart. Yeah, I remember that. This stuff is happening all the time. You know, and uh, yeah, it's official. It feels like we're in a bear market, like for sure now at this point. I wasn't quite sure until now. No, I, uh, I meant like upside down Bart, as in we're going upwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. That went right yeah, over that was shoulders. Josh is the bottom signal right there. Thank you for that. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I've, I've officially announced it. Uh, Zeshin or Zeshan, any other uh, questions, comments for us up here? No, thanks, guys. Thank you for your great work. Thank you so much. Yep, thanks for joining us, Mr. Rob. What's going on, Josh, Scott, Zach? What's up, guys? Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that my online savings rate has increased from 0.5 percent to 0.6 percent, so I'll be living the crypto world entirely and going all into uh, my online savings account. I'm very happy for you. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. It's a, it's a, it's a big change. That's a, that's a big increase. 20% increase right there. Yeah, 20% increase. That's, that's how they market it. I'll be able to retire at some point in the future. Yes. My, my bank actually, they, they came up with this great thing where they're going to give me a couple hundred bucks. But then they're going to take it from me in fees in a year. So it's like, it was a pretty cool little <clears throat> gift. Nice. Yeah, so just uh, another little tidbit. On ramps are on schedule as of today. That's all I'll give for a little nugget there. Very nice. Thanks for sharing. What, the, what do you say is on schedule? On ramps. On ramps? What, what do you mean by on schedule? Uh... I can't give specific dates. But ah. It's coming very soon. I don't know if I can. I mean, how about what about you, Chicago? You what about states? Can we yeah. can we know the areas where these might be coming? Yeah, Does it rhyme with immediately? Yes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, so for our first partner, I think all of the states have been released except maybe one. Um, for our second partner, which is coming very very shortly, um, is basically. The rest of the states in the U.S. I think I heard like a total of forty-three. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah. So I think forty-three plus the five from our first partner 
gives you 48. Yeah, so it doesn't include, um, yeah, I think two states specifically, which are New York and some other one. But yeah, everything is on schedule. So everyone look forward in, in the not too distant future. I will, I will be one of the internal testers. So I'll be able to find as many bugs as I can before it goes live, which is exciting. And is that onboarding in uh, USDC or UST? Uh, for cert for the existing states, it's going to be USDC because that's with uh, Circle, and I think we're New Cassetti's publicly, so I can say him now. Um, and the second partner is going to be a a few different stable coins, and then the plan after that. And okay. shortly thereafter, we'll open it up to other cryptocurrencies so you can buy other cryptos directly um, through our second partner. Oh, Which, so you're saying what, that like if maybe I'm in an area that doesn't have swaps, I still might be able to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum um, directly? That's correct. That is correct. Oh. Yes. Uh, I love to hear it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Rob, 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 quick question. This is Otis. Uh, when you say second partner, you mean a second partner in addition to um, Circles? Correct. Yeah, we're going to have multiple uh, on ramps partners, both in the U.S. and for global. Um, and Circle is one of them. We haven't officially announced the second one, but you'll hear about them very soon. Um, you can probably figure it out pretty quickly. Um, and there's a third one that we're going to use for globally, I believe. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks and for coming up. Each, in, uh... Yeah, and each one of them provide like different different assets, different uh, services, and so forth. I mean. Celsius is doing our best to make sure we give the broad number of services to as many people as we can. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's like Alex is here, so I'll shut up now. No, 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 uh, Rob, <laughs> keep coming on here. You can spill all the beans you want. Okay, that's what that's what the I, people are here for. I come. I try not to spill too many beans because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but I I only spill what Nuke lets me spill, basically. Um, I do go to a lot of the uh, two the twelve o'clock community meetings, meetups, or just the uh, Twitter spaces, where you can ask me lots of questions there if you want, because that's usually when I'm working and or on a lunch break and giving Tampa weather updates and all that fun stuff. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in, Rob. Appreciate you sharing that. And I know uh, that uh, excites me, so hopefully it excites some other people. Yeah, and I will say one more If you don't mind, say one more click. Yeah, to say, it's, so we're trying to... Um, get some ideas about how to provide uh, additional uh, cell token utility to on-ramps. Um, so if you guys, if anyone in the community has any ideas, uh, please send them to obviously the three guys at the top. So Josh, Jack, and Scott, and myself, because they're on the cell team six and I'm also on the on-ramps team. So um, whatever we decide, I probably will end up implementing it to some, to some extent. So if you guys have any ideas, please do share them with us. Um, we're always uh, interested in how we can provide more utility for our cell token. Yeah, yeah, Rob, your DMs are open, right? Will do. They should be, yes. Yeah. yeah. Everybody send uh, your DMs to Rob, 100%. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I only implement. I don't make decisions. I just implement. <laughs> Otis, Rob, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, and Rob, tell you your, your recruiter um, from Serbia, um, but I was kidding about Tampa-ish. Tell her I was just kidding. I know who she, who she is. Oh, she's on here. She knows. She's. Oh. We laughed. We joked about it yesterday, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I live in Tampa, Miss. So I'm, I'm. You're just calling me Tampa-ish too. That's why I thought it was funny. Yeah, I know you're in Tampa. <laughs> Move from Maryland. Yeah, yeah. And I don't regret any of it. And I am getting a lot of new followers now. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Alex, welcome in. Any uh, thoughts on the choppy ride? And uh, the UST peg and how that's going. A lot of people have been asking uh, if that has affected Celsius or not. Alex might be making a sandwich right now. And if so, this Celsius could help in their situation. Uh, I just saw that that thing said they're trying to raise a billion dollars. Um, you know, it could be a billion dollar opportunity. Yeah, I, I saw. Hey guys, I, I I was muted. I was talking to the into the ether. You were talking to Bill Kwan already. Is that what it was? 
Yeah. Uh, we're supposed to be on the same stage in uh, Boca in just a few days, you know, but he's a keynote speaker there. So, so I guess um, that's not going to happen, right? But uh, um, I was saying you're asking about our uh, exposure to UST. So we, we obviously listed it in the app and we had uh, at least 20 million, maybe more of uh, users kind of taking advantage of the yield. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, I, I don't have any special information more than you, you guys know from the news and from what's being published out there. So I don't, I don't have any updates, but obviously it's fighting for its life, right? It's either going to go back and get the peg or it's going to fail. And I know the TVL has dropped dramatically, right? What is it now? Like 6 billion something? Like it went down from 20 to 6. Uh, I, don't, I didn't look at the latest numbers. Plan C, do you know? Are you talking about the anchor protocol? Yeah. Plan C, you were just talking about that. Do you have those numbers? Uh, no, I, well, just, just the amount of Bitcoin that they hold. It just their balance has gone from... 80 something i think it was to 26 but no that you just asked a separate question no i'm not, I'm not sure on that yeah so they all what's also painful is that they kind of dumped all their uh, uh bitcoin very quickly like basically almost like at spot pricing they didn't do an otc deal or stuff like that so so they were one of the reasons why we went below to thirty thousand because it was such a Rapid uh, selling, right? Uh, continuous selling on uh, Gemini exchange. Um, but it, it is what it is, right? I think uh, Bitcoin rebounded when they stopped selling, right? So it's kind of like it works both ways. But uh, uh, obviously, not a, it's not a good thing for anyone in the community that this project is having problems, right? Because now people have doubts about other projects. They have doubts about the overall market, their investment in crypto, and obviously a lot of people who were uh, uh, hodlers of, of Luna or UST for a long time are, are uh, licking their wounds. So not, not a good situation. And how about Celsius's performance through the last 72 hours? Like, have we kept up strong? Have we had any major issues? Um, have we been deploying assets at very high yields? Like, what's what's that situation look like? Yeah, we, we didn't have any issues with our borrowers. Uh, I'm talking about institutional borrowers. We did, did have some liquidations, like people who obviously had margin calls and didn't want to uh, put more collateral or whatever. Uh, so there were some uh, retail liquidations, but no no issues on the institutional side. Uh, and uh, we had plenty of liquidity, still have plenty of liquidity. So uh, we have reserves uh, that we have at all times. And uh, obviously, it, became, it came very handy uh, to have all these reserves during uh, the drawdowns and, and uh, market uh, instability. So, so again, I think the crypto market is following the stock market. The stock market is following the Fed, and the Fed is following the inflation numbers. So... Tomorrow, I think they're publishing the new inflation number, and that's going to cascade either as a huge rally or as an, uh, another uh, market crash. So if, if if the inflation number comes below 8, anything below 8 will be seen as a positive, and anything above 8% uh, is going to be seen as a, uh, something negative that is going to force the, the Fed to take even more aggressive action. More aggressive action means uh, more stock market uh, uh, declines, and more stock market declines means uh, Bitcoin declines or Ethereum declines. So, uh, so that's just the the way. Th it's like a string that's pulling on a string that's pulling on a string, right? All these things are interconnected, and when people go risk off, and uh, that's what happens, right? It's uh, it's inevitable. All right. Well, Alex, uh, as a way to kick things off, I do have a uh, guest that one of our ambassadors met in a chat room. And then one thing led to another. 
uh, they introduced him to me, and he go. He's on here on stage. His name is Jareeb Figueredo. Figueredo. I hope I got the name right. He's here as a, uh, a entrepreneur and just a regular guy who happens to be running for the 2022 Republican uh, State House. But uh, we're not here to endorse. But we're here to uh, accept him as an entrepreneur, bring him into the room. He uh, likes Celsius as well. So uh, he said, sure, he'd, he'd be happy to stop by. So uh, Jareeb, do you want to kick, kick things off for us with your first question or comment? Hey, uh, thanks for thanks for having me. And, and as you said, uh, I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm coming from the private sector and um, I'm a Bitcoiner and, and a crypto uh, lover since 2016 and uh, that's very near when I when I found out about you guys uh, in uh, a year after I found crypto in um, in consensus 2017 in New York I found out about you guys and it, you know it's been a, a very nice ride and love what you guys are doing for the community and I'm very grateful that you're uh, having me as a speaker today Awesome. Well, great to have you. And uh, yeah, the, the your whole interest in crypto and Bitcoin and the fact that you're a Celsian too, I said, why not? Why not come and you get to uh, take part of this? And if you have any questions for Alex or comments, you know, uh, we're glad to have you. Thank you. No, um, no, I was just, I was very interested in, in what he was talking about and on the cascade effect and uh, what the Fed is, is doing is very knowledgeable um happy to happy to hear uh, everything that uh he just talked about i didn't know that he was they were meeting tomorrow but it looks like tomorrow is going to be a big day yeah they're publishing the the government is going to publish the inflation results again they measure them very weirdly like they exclude certain things and they include other things so I don't think that the number represents uh, re the real inflation or the real problems out there, but uh, that's what we use to compare either year over year or month over month. And uh, again, everybody's just waiting to see what that number is and is it going to make everybody more calm or everybody more nervous? What if that number is exactly the same? Uh, even number being the same is not good, right? We, we want to see a reduction in inflation. Um, we we want to see that uh, we hit the peak, right? That inflation is going to go down over time. Even if it's slowly going down, that's fine, but it, it's, it's, it's got to go down, right? We, it, it's got to be whatever, 3 to 4%. It can be 8 So it uh, doesn't have to happen right away, but if it's, seven and then six and a half and then six and so on so on that's fine that's all we need to see well um, everyone in this room is going to be watching uh going to be glued to the tv tomorrow um crypto guy i know you had a question yeah actually a couple comments um first off you guys were asking about what luna's total value lock is it's sitting right now at about nine billion uh based upon uh defi llama uh, recent measurement that I just looked at a few minutes ago. So just you guys are asking that. So that's where it's at right now. So it's come up. I know earlier today when I was looking at it, it was right about 6.5. So someone's been adding some liquidity. Yeah. And uh, USD is at uh, 82 cents. So it's, uh, it's kind of bouncing. Looks like it has pretty strong support at, at that uh 70 to you know 70 71 cents so um you know i mean it makes sense if they buy it at 70 when it hits 70 they start buying it because then um uh effectively they're getting a, a discount right so if they buying it off the market that you need less uh luna to uh recover or the helping the ratio between Luna and USD. So um, so one way to close the gap, the funding gap that they have, is to just keep buying 60 and 70 cents USD and slowly closing the gap. But they do need, uh, you know, they do need additional funding to basically close that gap, from what I understand. 
Yeah, and actually, if you look at the most recent price action for UST, it's sitting about eighty-four cents. So it's come it's come off the low. Um, but yeah, Alex, you're hundred percent right. They they need some more liquidity. So I'm looking for what uh, Do Kwan is going to come out with here in a little while about what his plan is for more stabilizing the uh, platform. Yeah, and thanks for coming up, uh, Crypto Guy, and giving us uh, that bit of information. Appreciate it. Actually, I started one more. I'm sorry, I said one more comment. So uh, I just want to let you guys know I um, opened up a uh, crypto.com after the US investor thing hit. And I can tell you that um, I don't really like the platform. I'm using it as a <clears throat> way to uh, get some more tokens, but I'm waiting for you guys to open it back up so we can come back home and, uh, you know, uh, continue to build on our, our uh, you know, financial freedom path on Celsius. I really, eh, crypto.com is okay, but it's not, not my thing. Um, just want to let you guys know how much I appreciate all you guys doing. And if you have any updates, greatly appreciate anything. <laughs> yeah, well, it, we, we changed its name. It's now called crypto.gone after they were, uh, took away all of their uh, rewards and stuff. But we are, um, we're, we have some announcements. I, I missed the announcements when I just joined. So what uh, what did you guys talk about? Like, what was the... Did did you guys yeah, talk about... Rob, the yeah. he, Rob, <laughs> Rob was talking about our um, Fiat on-ramp um, that we're about to do the final testing for the uh, states, which would bring us up to about 45 total states um, for, for on-ramping Fiat. Well, North Carolina is one of those. Which one? I, North Carolina. Hey, I don't have the list in front of me, but uh, yeah, so are we launching May 19th, right? If everything tests right, May 19th is the launch date, right? 17th, I believe. Tuesday. 17th? Uh, yeah. I think that might be an internal launch, but anyway. Something around there, yeah. Yeah, 17 or 19th. What's one or the other one? Um, and um, Okay, I'm just looking at the other dates here. Gotcha. And Alex, while you're looking that up, I um, also just want to comment that if you looked at raw commodity prices, recent some of the recent trades that are going on, you can see that the raw commodity prices are coming down. I mean, not dramatic, but they are coming down. So I do anticipate the inflation number is going to be less than 8.5. Um, I don't know how much, but, you know, I think it'll be less than 8.5. Well, it's so housing and all kind of other stuff is a big component. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, I saw a bunch of different uh, like price for used cars and price for rentals and price for all kind of other stuff is coming down. So it should be good news, but uh, price of energy and other thing did go up. So we, we need to see how they're going to play with it or how they're going to, uh, uh, you know, show it to us. So we'll see. But uh, May, May 17th, it might be May 17th because I have another release here on May 17th. So that's next week, I guess, right? Um, we'll have uh, uh, loans. You'll be able to take loans straight on the web app. Um, so you'll be able to manage and take loans or close loans, do whatever you need to do with loans on the web app, right? So for those of you who haven't used it yet, just uh, go to Celsius.network. There's a click to log in. When you log in, you're in the web app, right? And you can do all kinds of stuff in there. There's a lot of bells and whistles that are only available there and, and um, again on ramps I think is a big thing a lot of our customers uh, obviously couldn't uh, move money in and out of Celsius until now but now most of the states are going to be open and that's going to be obviously very helpful for a lot of people um, so we want to go back want you guys to when that launches in, uh, in a week or so uh, use that also as a great kind of intro to go back and invite maybe people you spoke to in the past to kind of tried it and got stuck or, or did KYC but then didn't move anything because they, they didn't want to go to Coinbase or some other platform and buy stuff there and then move it over. So now they'll be able to connect their bank and do everything right in one place. And so definitely, again, you can 
still use that fifty dollar referral code in your wallet to bring some of these people over. And that's uh, monumental. Right. That it, it's there hasn't been an efficient way to buy coins directly on Celsius up until this launch. Um, so starting with stable coins and then breaching out to to other assets directly, even if you don't have swaps, um, really a, a, a huge shift forward for the accessibility of crypto um, on our platform. Yeah, and uh, even, even Ammo's excited about it. That's right. Make sure you do KYC for Ammo, so you know, so he can open his own account. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> credit cards. So we're going to be doing uh, testing in June and then general availability in July. We already have 50,000 people in um, on the waiting list, right? So, uh, and again, this is a, a, na- a nationwide availability to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're credit or not, uh, but we'll start shipping it in July. Uh, and... Uh, We'll be talking a little bit more about uh, the different uh, credit card functions, I think, uh, starting next week. Awesome. Thanks for those updates, Alex. <clears throat> Elijah, I believe you were up next. Hi. Thank you, everyone. Uh, great to be here. Uh, this is Elijah from Malaysia. Uh, so I have a couple of comments and also maybe a couple of questions. Um, just on the UST uh, Luna kind of debacle that we've seen uh, six, for the past six days, um, from from Malaysia, it's a Asian country, so I grew up in uh, you know the uh, Asian financial crisis, and what I feel Luna is doing is it's similar to emerging markets selling their gold to save their FX. Um, and when I say gold, I mean Bitcoin to save their, you know, UST. Um, and it won't work, I feel, uh, in the long run. Um, and with regards to why the... Uh, so I'm, I'm a chartist. I look at charts, uh, not much of a fundamentalist. Um, and looking at the charts... Uh, there was a demand zone uh, liquidity pool since July 2021. Um, and the prices actually came back to that demand zone at 28K. Uh, but it was building up uh, since January uh, with the harmonic pattern. Um, and it turned into a bearish uh, Gartley pattern. And the the uh, FIP uh, one. 0.618 is actually at 23k uh, for the Gartley uh, pattern. So I believe that um, there's more downside, and the the whole um, you know uh, rumors about Citadel attack uh, on Luna and USD and bringing down the Bitcoin price. Uh, I don't think that's true, you know, because. Uh, uh, Dow Jones, uh, SPX, and NASDAQ also fell. So I think it's more of a liquidity grab. Um, and lastly, on CPI that's coming out, um, I feel that the Fed has limited tools in their toolbox. Um, and it's more of a stance, rather. So they're at 1%. I don't think they'll go much higher than that. Um, by just, you know, flexing that tool that they have, the markets actually reacted and NASDAQ actually got hit very, very hard with it. So I feel that there's still a melt up coming soon, uh, this year, maybe early next year. Uh, but I believe that, you know, there's still some more room for that, that 4.236 hit on the FIP, uh, for most of the markets. Um, and Frankly, to say, um, I was expecting just a retracement for Bitcoin to around 55, 58K. But if it really goes and breaks the market structure, which we have at 28,500, I think we are looking at maybe 70 to 80, perhaps 90K. 
um, towards the year end. So I was very bearish on just a retracement. But if it goes down to 23, 20K, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to become bullish again uh, and looking at, you know, above 70K uh, just for that, that, that uh, parallel channel that uh, the price has been in for, you know, the past two years. Um, so that's all from my side. Uh, happy to take any questions if anyone has. Thanks. Thanks for the space. Well, the, the Fed has limited weapons, but they're nuclear weapons. So you don't need, when you have nuclear weapons, you don't need a lot of weapons, right? You just drop one bomb and, and that does all the damage. So unfortunately, um, um, I agree with you. They already did Hello. the damage in the stock market. Uh, but they are they need to um they need to see the markets uh calm down before they stop hiking right so yes uh, it's definitely kind of risk off they calm the animal spirits and you can see funding and uh ipos and everything kind of freezing overnight so all that already happened but uh, they need to give it a little bit more time so they're not gonna um if they right now say, okay, we're going to stop at 1% or 2%, then the animal spirits will come back very, very quickly. So I think they're going to need to give it a few months and a few more raises before they kind of say, okay, you know, inflation is uh, tamed, right? We're going to need to see a few more prints from the inflation numbers. We're going to need to see a few more prints from, um, you know, energy prices and other prices before they can confidently uh, Hello. think that they arrested uh, inflation. Elijah, did that conclude your uh, thoughts up here on stage? Yeah, uh, just one last point on inflation. Um, I don't think we are going into you know stagnation or hyperinflation. I feel that the chart really looks like the 1929 um, you know, blow off kind of uh, hyperbolic chart that we are looking at for all markets. So I feel that we, a deflation spiral is much more likely. Everyone wants to invest and be a trader nowadays. So I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a repeat of 1929. Um, and obviously, everyone knows, you know, 10 years later, there was a war in 1939. So I think you know, it's a bit of a conspiracy, but I think that's where we're heading if, you know, the markets kind of, you know, melt up. Yeah, that's my last. All right, so we Thanks got 10 again. years. We got 10 years before there's war. Okay, guys, don't forget to party. I'm going to live life to the fullest. Thank you for Thank coming you. up, Elijah. <clears throat> uh, Harib, did you have a question? Yes, so... um so Alex, um, as you know, I'm running for Florida State House, and I'm one of the front runners. And um, I think I have a really good chance to uh, making it to to the State House. And one of my uh, my ambition is to make Bitcoin uh, legal tender in Florida. And um, something that uh, so I have two questions around that. So the first question is, um, do you think that we currently have the infrastructures with uh, companies like you? Uh, Celsius and and to adopt it massively as as legal tender and process um, transactions millions of transactions per day um, and and more millions of people and um, yeah that's so that's that's the first question before I move into the the next next one because the next one may be a, a little bit more complicated but I'm concerned about if you know if we have the infrastructure to massively onboard and while we protect also the consumers? Well, I don't think Bitcoin is ready for mass payment system, right? It's ready for store value. That's what it's doing best. Uh, but other chains are trying to uh, solve the payment or, um, you know, um, other applications or other utilities. So I think we have to wait and see, see who is Ethereum going to win it, right? They're going to scale and lower their transaction costs or somebody else is going to take over, eat their lunch and, and become the kind of dominant payment network. Uh, but I think those are two very different applications, right? So 
and we're obviously fighting for being the dominant uh, yield platform. So you have different uh, people doing different things, and uh, I don't think one chain is going to solve all the issues for all the different uh, problems that you have with traditional finance. And on the legislation uh, side of it, so um, one of my mission is to uh, bring more startup companies or more blockchain companies to Florida. What what do you think from uh, uh, your experience in in managing your your company? What do you what do you think it will be fr friendly legislation for for a state where you could say uh, I'm moving camp and I'm 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 going to Florida. I'm going to open my company there. Well. I think too many companies already moved to Florida, so we don't want to encourage you, right? I mean, <laughs> everybody's leaving New York and uh, California and other places and moving to Florida, lower taxes, more, you know, more fun. And uh, we do have a Tampa office. We have uh, probably at least, I, I would say probably, I don't know, 30 people in Florida now. So... Um, and uh, we conquered Miami. We, we had... Uh, one almost 1,100 people show up to our meetup during the Bitcoin 2022, which was the largest. Uh, the police told me that we were the largest gathering during the Bitcoin 22 event. Right, the Celsius was the largest one, so we definitely uh, came in force and, um, you know, uh, so definitely. I look. I think. Legislation is important and uh, kind of uh, allowing companies to experiment and try new things is part of uh, uh, what this is all about. And uh, I hear rumors that uh, Dos Santos is going to run for president, right? So uh, so he's definitely going to free up the uh, both the, you know, the mayor, I guess the mayor is going to run for governor and the governor is going to run for president, right? Because moving, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, musical chairs, right? Yep, that, that's right. Um, there, the rumors, um, I'm meeting with him late later this month in a Lincoln dinner, so I'll, I'm going to shoot my, my question. I'll send you a DMs if he, uh, if he tells me yes. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but. I, you know, I, um, I really want him to stay in Florida as, as their governor. Uh, but that's a little selfish for me. I'd like to yeah. make a suggestion to jury. I don't know if, if I pronounce that right, but what Florida already has is behind a number of other states on the Celsius platform swaps, for example. So if you could, you know, you, you, you're, you're shooting for what I think may be too high. If you can accomplish some of the smaller things like just getting swaps would be a good improvement. I think there's some other features that probably Celsius could tell you that Florida is preventing that other states are allowing that you could work on and use them as examples to the other states. Yeah, that's, that's uh, exactly what I'm trying to understand. What, uh, what can we do as you know, in terms of legislation to make it friendly, um, the friendliest possible. So I, I have my own plan that I draft with, with my attorney. And um, we want to have a dedicated court for for um, mitigations and, and, and issues with businesses. So that makes that makes businesses uh, feel more comfortable in, in doing business in Florida especially uh, in the crypto industry. So it's a, it's a dedicated court and um, I, I published it on, on my, on my uh, Twitter a while ago at the language because it's, it's very, um, very high level legally. But uh, that's, that's one of the things is, is just you know, having the infrastructure or the legislation that makes companies feel safe, that they're not, that the, the government is not going to go after them that we're, we're here to protect innovation. And that's what I want for Florida because I want to guarantee the future of uh, my son and the, the generations to come. And I know that a blockchain is uh, the space for that. Well, we definitely appreciate it. And uh, we need more uh, people who are kind of focused on, uh, again, just enabling innovation, right? It doesn't mean everything is going to be successful. We're seeing the testing and the trials every day. 
right? And we just need to, um, um, you know, do our best to uh, help everybody who is at least attempting to make the world a better place, right? Versus just uh, saying, no, let's stop all of that and stick with what with laws from 1940, you know? Harib, did that can, uh, conclude your thoughts up here on stage? Yes. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you for coming up. Uh, Rob, I believe you were up next. Yes. Um, one quick note to Zach. I think opening an account for ammo would probably be a good idea. It would, of course, be a no flea account. <laughs> but um, um, I just wanted to make a comment on the Fiat Gateway uh, and the experience I've had. Um, I tried to link a Capital One account to uh, with the new Fiat Gateway, and unfortunately, Capital One is not going to play nice with Plaid. They refuse to accept the connection that's offered from Plaid. The frustrating part is that you can go through the entire process and receive emails from both Capital One and notes from the app saying that you successfully linked your account, but in reality, they will not connect an ACH account to Celsius. I uh, spoke to their two of their supervisors who said that the, their company doesn't feel Plaid is secure enough and will therefore not allow this connection. This was a problem with the old Fiat gateway also, but I had hoped that the new one would uh, you know, reconcile these issues, but it's probably worth it so other people don't go through this frustration because it will tell you that everything is fine and then it won't present the option for the ACH transfer in the app. So it may, you may want to remove Capital One from the, the list of uh, banks that may qualify for that. Well, I would prefer to remove you from Capital One, right? That, that would solve the problem because the only way to uh, solve the problem is enough people leaving Capital One for them to decide that they don't want to lose all of your business, that they rather lose just a little bit of your business by allowing you to work with Celsius, right? I would love to do that. As a matter of fact, I would love for you to take my paycheck and I would love for you to handle all my banking services and that's the plan. But uh, in the interim... Uh, since I still have to pay bills, um, I think, or a few bills at least, um, the workaround I found is to just ACH out to another bank, obviously. Uh, but right. yes, I would like to choose you. It's just a, it will be a frustrating experience if people try to, to hook up. And there are quite a few people that still unfortunately use Capital One. So we, we are working on direct deposits. Anyone has a date? Do we know when... Uh, uh, a, a date for direct deposit? No? All right. I think well, Rob would coming. be the only one that knows that one. Yep. Rob yes. is uh, trying to get up on stage. Let me make some room for him. Ron, Paul, feel free to uh, come back on stage. I just had to scoot someone real quick. Rob, what's going on? Yeah, so two questions. Can you clarify what you mean by direct deposits, Alex? Like with paychecks and everything? Being able to go to your employer and say, hmm. change where you're sending my paycheck, stop sending it to Capital One, send it to this new uh, address, right? This new account number that is uh, going, basically translates into, uh, yeah. uh, you know, straight into stable coins in your Celsius account. Yeah, I'm not aware of that, and I'm not working on that team, so I can't comment on that. Um, I did have one question, if you don't mind me asking, uh, for that gentleman who was just talking about Capital One. Can he? He's saying that Capital One using Plaid and ACH deposits, like on-ramps, fiat on-ramps and off-ramps, don't work. That is correct. They will take you through. If we, if you try to connect using your your app, it will take you through the whole Plaid enter username password setup, and it will tell you that the connection was successful, and you will get an email from Capital One saying that you are now linked to Celsius. But you will also get a quick alert that drops down from the top of the app saying ACH is prohibited. 
It's a red alert that drops down from the top of the screen. And then if you check with Capital One, they will tell you that we do not allow um, account connections through Plaid, even though obviously it does. So there's some sort of software issue there. So when you say the app, you're talking about the Celsius app or you're talking about the Capital One app? Celsius app. So you're talking the existing Bycoins uh, feature using ACH? Correct. It will not work with Capital One. You cannot establish an ACH route okay. into Celsius from Capital One. Okay, so why don't we do this? As part of our internal testing, we'll find an internal tester that has a Capital One account and test that out for you because um, that's very interesting to, to hear and to learn because we, we, do, we are using Plaid as a third-party integrator with our two partners. Um, so I'd be very interested to see how that works with our new buy coins versus our existing buy coins feature. Um, Cause I know our existing buy coins feature has uh, other partners that we work with that they may have issues with. Um, we are now directly integrating with um, our two particular partners and not having to use a third party for that anymore. So um, we'll definitely add that to our test cases and try to find someone internally to test that out. Um, how's that sound? It sounds fantastic. Thanks very okay. much. Again, yeah. my preference is to go directly to you guys, but until you get set up, uh, that would be very, very helpful. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I'll make sure we do that. Yep. Thanks for coming up, Rob. Any other uh, thoughts or questions? No, thanks very much. You can send me down. Awesome. Thanks for coming up. Uh, guys, make sure you share out the room. Let everyone know that we're live. If you want to join us on stage, just tap the mic. Josh, you're up next. Hey, fellas. Uh, thanks for having me up. <clears throat> um, uh, am I coming through okay? Yep, you're all good. Hey, guys. Yeah, so um, I just had a question a little bit more broadly uh, on the macro markets, obviously. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating, um, obviously, how interconnected uh, everything uh, is. And it seems like it's, it's more tenuous than... Uh, than ever right now. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, history, if history has taught us anything in traditional markets, it's the pain that over leveraged derivatives can cause um, and, and uh, the, the rippling effect it can have through many, many different um, markets uh, and just globally. So I'm just curious if what we're, what we're seeing happen to UST, if what we're seeing happen to, 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 to Terra right now, um, you know, what, what are, what are your thoughts, the, the panel's thoughts on any sort of uh, indicators that that might ha be or indications that might have for just the, the concept of stable coins in general, um, or, or some other big stables that are, um, you know, paired with a number of different crypto uh, assets throughout the market. Um, you know, if, if, if that's, if, if it's any sort of early warning system or what, what else it, it might be um, an indicator of that might be a problem coming down the pipeline. Yeah. I, uh, maybe I'll start. Uh, I look both uh, uh, Tether and USDC obviously didn't have any issues. And uh, if you look at the volume on Tether today, uh, uh, it was over 220 billion in volume i think it's probably their largest volume ever in a day right so that's more than bitcoin and ethereum put together and uh so no people issues. kind of panicking it's people kind of panicking and 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 just lots and lots of selling and buying and transacting on the broader market relative that, to what they're yeah, yeah but that's that's my point is that that if everybody's panicking and everybody's worried about stable coins and your two main stable coins remain pegged perfectly, even though the volume is three, four times greater than normal. Uh, that is proof that these these are not that there's a big difference between uh, uh, synthetic coins or or algorithmic stable coins and uh, regular stable coins. Right. That's exactly the point. Is that that there's no you know, there's no bank in the world or institution in the world that can handle, uh, you know, whatever, uh, manipulating or holding a peg on something that's trading 200 billion a day. 
Okay, they're just too big, right? So either it holds because of market forces or it doesn't hold. And and uh, both Tether and USDC proved that they both have a real peg, meaning uh, people are treating them like a dollar. And that's why politicians are worried about uh, these type of coins, right? I mean, the, when you hear, I saw on CNBC today, there were several politicians uh, questioning Janet Yellen about stable coins and stuff like that this morning. And uh, all the questions were about, hey, shouldn't you do more on regulating all these stable coins? And obviously she, they didn't mean synthetic or, or um, you know, things like Luna. Uh, so I, I, I'm not worried at all. I think uh, and that's the bedrock well, of crypto. And uh, expanding, if, expanding on that real quick, sorry to cut in, but but there's significantly more USDT circulate in circulation than USD, right? And so my, would, would my follow up question to that would be, yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying that USDT is, you know, doing uh, double its volume or more. Uh, and, and no, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Is that is that a indication that there's just a lot of, you know, there there isn't there isn't any um you know, exiting necessarily of a lot of that, of a lot of that volume or, or, you know, p- people aren't necessarily trying to convert that into USD, but they're just moving it back and forth between either other stables or other, you know, other, other ver- digital currencies or assets. And that, that while yes, that volume is impressive, it, it might not necessarily be indicative of, let's say the ability to collateralize or, you know the the uh, any sort of clearinghouse or obligations that that tether might have or exchanges holding tether might have look the beauty of a blockchain is that you don't need to do hypo- hypothesis right like uh, when you talk about the fed or you talk about jp morgan we can all only guess because we don't know what's happening behind closed doors or what's happening in the Fed wire system, they don't tell us every transaction. They don't publish all that information. But on the blockchain, you can see exactly how many tethers are being created and how many are being redeemed, uh, down to the to the last dollar, right? Every day, every hour, every minute. So, uh, and you can see that there's no redemption. So it's not like we're not we're not guessing. We're the opposite. There's new new tether being minted, right? So. So I don't. Again, I'm not here representing Tether or representing USDC or or US, US, UST. Uh, it's not like I have some uh, like a pawn in the game and I'm trying to advance my position or something. I'm just trying to uh, describe facts that I see on the blockchain, and uh, we all have access to the same facts. And if somebody thinks differently, great. Let's uh, have a conversation. But I. I I do see a lot of stress around uh, the different uh, coins, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Obviously, there's a lot of selling going on, and that's why prices are going down. There's more sellers than buyers every day. So uh, I just don't see that on stable coins, right? It's not uh, – there's a buyer for every seller on stable coins, and, and, and the peg is holding because of that. Josh, did that answer your questions, or do you have any other thoughts up here? Um, you know, uh, to, to a degree, I, I don't disagree with anything you see, um, that, that uh, Alex is saying there. I just think that um, I don't know that um, I don't know that that, that, that my, like the core of my question was really answered. Not that not that he can, right? I'm not saying that anybody can really, right? Like he's right. It's just sort of um, it, it's it's a little bit of uh, you know we don't know what's happening behind closed doors. But at the end of the day. I don't know that I don't know that, you know, just if, if I'm if I'm if I'm doing a lot of converging, converting to USDT um, and then I'm I'm also but I'm not I'm not converting USDT to any fiat, whether that's USD or, you know, euros or what have you. But if I'm just if I'm just holding that in USDT, that would make sense that there that, you know, we need more minting of USDT. And that explains why. Well, that, yeah, happens. that's that's exactly what's happening. So, yeah, in in absolute numbers, there there are withdrawals from DeFi, right? If you look at total TVL in DeFi, that number is going down almost every day for the last several weeks, 
right? So it peaked and then it started going down and it accelerated in the last few days. That is not what's happening with stable coins. So bo both USDC and USDT, and I don't have the exact number in front of me, so I don't want to give you exact numbers, but if you look at the total outstanding, that number is growing. So like, uh, you know, the market cap for USDT right now is uh, 83.207 billion, right? And USDC is... Uh, 48.522 and you can write down those numbers and check them tomorrow and you'll see if it's going up or down right so the peg doesn't change but the overall minting or destroying tells you how much fiat activity back and forth is happening between the blockchains and uh, the fiat world right and that tells you if money is leaving crypto or is money coming still coming into crypto in terms of stable coins so it's very simple. It's very simple math, right? You can, like, I use coin stats, but you can use any app basically to look at these numbers. All they do is read it from the blockchain, and uh, and that's it. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, DeFi is obviously taking a taking a wallop, right? Um, is that is this potentially creating a big problem? down the line. I agree that right now you, uh, the stables are, I guess, holding up right, but I guess my concern is um, that, like, you, you, Tethered isn't isn't really collateralized, right, by uh, um, well, uh, I don't know that, I don't know that um, Well, let, let's, let's, I, let's, yeah. walk, let's walk through this. How is Tether created? What do you need to do to create Tether? Call the mint function. Sorry? Call the mint function, like at, like at a contract. Level? No, but I'm saying like a, for the company, obviously Tether, the company is minting these. But I'm saying the only way to create Tether is by giving Growing them, up. giving them a dollar or a, a, you know like a government bond or mm. something that's worth a dollar. It's either a dollar or a representation of a dollar, right? And they'll mint you one. USDT. You for by the two, side, right? For by the fiat or from crypto, right? Like you can't. The, like, you cannot give them Bitcoin and mint USDT. Like they don't. They don't take. Uh, uh, you can't sell them your Bitcoin and mint USDT. Okay? okay. So the only way to create USDT is to give them some fiat currency that they accept. I think they accept other uh, fiat besides dollars. I, I don't know exactly, but I know. I assume that they will take a euro or a British pound or things like that, and they'll give you the the value that these other fiats represent, right? So if you want one dollar, whatever the conversion rate is. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's how they have more USDT than USD. They're taking other fiats and just minting right. USDTs. They're not minting e -R -U -E -U -R -Ts. They Right. They hold they hold gold. They hold all kind of other assets. So they they go and they buy. Uh, some of it is held in, in fiat and some of it is held in government bonds and some of it is held in corporate bonds so they can earn yield on it and some of it is held in gold, right? So they basically make their own choice. They're basically saying, look, we'll guarantee you that you can redeem a dollar for every one of these dollars and we'll have at the stations that we have more than the USDT that we issued. So so the attestations are exactly what Terra doesn't uh, Lu Terra Luna doesn't have right they cannot show you in any way that they have more dollars than UST they issued that's why they're in having issues but Tether and USDC can show you that at any time 24 7 365 or Paxos or um, you know uh, TUSD right so there's four or five companies that do this for a living and they can they have attestation. Some of them are daily. Some of them are monthly, right? So like uh, uh, Genesis, not Genesis, sorry. Uh, uh, Gemini has uh, 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 the Gemini dollar and they have attestation. Things like daily attestation. So that they have more dollars than or equivalent. And the question is just what is the equivalent, right? So, so for Paxos, for example, they say 93% cash, 7% in government bonds. 
and other people have other mixes, but everybody has a different mix that could be easily converted into dollars. So what we don't know for Tether, and that's what I think everybody's asking, is okay, well, you hold gold, can you tell us how much gold you're holding? Are you holding uh, government bonds? Can you tell us how much of the you know, total 83.207 billion is in government bonds versus corporate bonds and so on? But uh, there's no question that all those assets together are worth more than 83.027. That's the point, right? So, so if if we have if we have a concern about that, then we start we should start worrying about USDT. But you cannot you cannot just mint. I know some people think that you tether just wakes up in the morning and decides, oh, you know. Looks like a really sunny day, so I'm going to mint $100 million worth of USDT. That's not what they do. Is there any similarity between their minting uh, function and, um, and the, the, I guess, the, the collateralization requirements of, let's say, like central banks in terms of being able to uh, you know, loan out up to 90, you know, 9x, whatever their uh, clearinghouse requirements are? Like, is, that, is that something that is known? Are they, do they only so yeah, so key? so commercial banks, commercial banks have limitations, like basically how much. Like when you get a mortgage and you give your bank twenty percent and they give you a hundred percent of the money, they create the rest of the money, right? They have the right to use fractional reserve to create this money that doesn't really exist. They just put it in your spreadsheet. They put it in their, in their. Uh, uh, I I I went too far calling it a spreadsheet, but it's really just a database, right? And they just decide nice. that you, you you now have a million dollars in your account. You can go buy a house. So, but they do have federal restrictions on basically what is the or the FDIC has restrictions on what is the limits that they can, um, you know that again the fractional reserve ratio, which usually is ten to one or something like that. The Federal Reserve itself, right, does not have any of these restrictions. So, like in the last two and a half years. The Fed printed something like ten trillion dollars with a T, right? So that's ten and with twelve zeros behind it, and none of that money existed. Like there's no reserves against it. There's no dollars. There's no gold or some right. asset or bonds or anything like that. They basically issued an IOU to the U.S. government or whoever got this money, right? So they said to the government, "Hey, you owe me this money, right?" And and then basically. The government went and issued bonds and saw and gave these bonds or IOUs to the Fed, right? So that's the exchange that happens, and all the commercial banks basically go and sell all these things back and forth to do the transaction between the government as a borrower and the Fed as an issuer. But what what, what did the Fed do? The Fed basically created this debt. It's debt, right? It's not money. It's debt, right? It's a it's debt in the form of a currency. Right. And our kids are going to have to, our grandkids are going to have to repay it, right? Because basically it, now it carries whatever, 2 or 3% interest, but tomorrow it could be 6 or 7% or 12% or whatever, right? So, so unfortunately. Is this, is yeah. this fractional reserve accounting? Is this, is this basis? Um, no, no. So the Fed doesn't all? have it. The Fed. Well, I, know, I, know the, I know the Fed doesn't, but, but um, does, does USDT have a concept of this? No. So the, the USDT. Uh, follows it, you know. Tether follows its own rules. It's not governed by. It's not, I think, a member of the FDIC or the Fed or anything like that. It's not part of that, right? It's a, like an offshore institution. So when you when you give him your fiat and you take USDT, you that is a commercial transaction, and you just agree, just like you go and you buy a painting. You go to a store and you say, "Here's my hundred dollars. Can you give me this painting?" Just instead of a painting, you're getting a USDT, right? It's it's a, it's a commercial transaction. Got it. So it's always, it's always one to one in terms of yeah. some, some form of collateralization. And and they are the issuer, and you have you're trusting them to give you back your hundred dollars. The the difference between that and a painting is normally when you go back to the store that you bought a painting from, and you say, "Hey, here's your painting. Give me my hundred dollars back." They laugh at you and say, "Well, are you crazy? What are you talking about? You bought the painting." But here, the seller of the painting is telling you, look, at any time, you don't like this painting, come back, we'll give you your $100 back. That's what right. Tether does. 
All right, guys. Sorry, sorry for dominating your last question. I'll drop down. Um, do, do centralized fiat exchanges, do regulated exchanges, do they have any sort of fractional? Uh, um, like, what what are their requirements as it pertains to collateralization? Are they all? I, I can't imagine they're one to one, or any of these other uh, like. So none of, none of the none. Yeah, none of the exchanges that I know are allowed to issue stable coins. Like, even Coinbase. Coinbase really mints USDC because it's a it's a partner with with uh, Circle, which is the issuer of USDC. It's not, I don't think it's it's allowed to issue USDC on its own. So it's just lo almost like an agent of uh, Circle, right? And uh, um, so, and I don't know any other exchange that allows you to do this. And now, exchanges on onshore exchanges like Coinbase or Gemini and so on, don't offer you leverage, right? Like, uh, okay, right. you want to buy two Bitcoins with one Bitcoin worth of money? Got, great, we'll give you 2x leverage or 20x leverage. But offshore exchanges do offer that. So if you go to FTX and Binance and so on, they used to do 100 to 1, right? They would wreck you in, in about one second. Right, they're, they're, just deploying your own, they're deploying your own deposits against you. Yeah, exactly. They take the other side and they know that 95% of the time you're going to lose your money. Uh, so they, they're happy to take that bet. They're basically issuing you the credit, right? They're giving you that money, that fake money that they created so you could buy this position and they are the ones on the other side, taking the other side of the trade. And and that's what most people don't understand. So they they're the, somehow so they're the think real threat. They're, they're the real threat in terms of they don't need to collude together. When, but if the liquidation engines happen to all move in synchrony because everybody's law of large averages, everybody's they, they're everybody the ones liquidating you. When, yeah. when, when too many people go against them, too many people are winning. They just move the market in the wrong direction, right? So right. So and statistically, the, reason... the same number of people opening positions at the same levels, right? Like on each one, so that their their liquidation movements happen to just coincide with one another. Right? They, well, think about it. they have infinite money because they can lend themselves a billion dollars of fake money and go against you in their own market where they decide what the price is. Right. So, so they're like the Fed, but they just operate offshore and they they run by their own rules. So suddenly, when you see an offshore exchange. And the price drops, just like we saw a few days ago, right? I mean, I, I warned about that. I said the, on, on my AMA, I think it was two Fridays ago, that we were at all-time record long, that I, I was worried about the price of Bitcoin. The one thing that got me really, really worried, despite Terra buying and everybody else buying Bitcoin, was the fact that most retail was at all-time uh, long, which means that the exchanges are just going to, find a way to steal all that money by wrecking all these people. And to wreck all these people, they're going to crash the price of Bitcoin. So, so unfortunately, it's almost like you want, to, you want the price of Bitcoin to go up, we need to all of us go and short Bitcoin. And then the price is going to go up because the exchanges will do the opposite. So the reason, the reason our regulators here in the United States are saying we're not going to approve ETFs is because they're afraid of exactly this thing. They're basically saying we cannot control these offshore exchanges. They're hiding pretty good, right? Try to find uh, where Binance is based or shut down the servers or or serve them a subpoena or do anything, right? Uh, so we're going to wait. We're not going to issue uh, ETF licenses or ETF approvals until we can see that there is, a, and I agree with it. I mean, obviously I want an ETF, but I definitely agree that there is a very good reason for the Fed, not the Fed, but the the, these, offshore, you know, these offshore accounts, by the way, these offshore leverage exchanges, they're also offering influencers and YouTubers like 40%, like 40% commissions on the profits earned by any referrals and stuff for life. So it's like they're also like using these, these, these like, you know, sort of. Like yeah, look, so some of these guys offer you $4,000 to, to join. $4,000. They put yeah. four. No, no, not talking about oh, a referral. Just for you to join, yeah. Just, I, I don't remember the name of the exchange, but there's several of them that uh, the moon and other people are promoting, right? If you look at the signature, you'll, you'll see all of those exchanges, all offshore exchanges. They offer you four grand. Just come and trade on our exchange and we'll give you, you'll start with a $4,000 balance because all they're trying to do is get you to win a few rounds 
and then put your real money in because you'll feel like you're rich, and then they'll wreck you, right? And then you know, that's how they steal your money. Is basically they gotta get you in into the game. You think you're just playing with their money, and then you feel confident that you're gonna win, right? And and then they wreck you. So, so like like you said, they pay huge uh, rewards to these influencers, and unfortunately, again, every one of these people who gets wrecked is one less person who's going to stay with us in crypto and, and, and one less person we can get to financial freedom. So so all these things are really, really bad for our industry. And again, in this case, uh, we side with the regulators who try to shut down all these guys. Josh, that concludes your thoughts. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Alex. Yep, thanks for coming up. Uh, guys, please share the room out. Let everyone know we're live. And if you want to join us, just tap on the mic and join us up on stage. Harry, you, you've you been waiting patiently. You're up next. Yep. <clears throat> hey, guys. Um, so, uh, question for you. <clears throat> uh, so, I prior to the um, earn and custody, um, I guess wallets separation at Celsius. Um, I'd moved some uh, Bitcoin uh, over uh, to, uh, to look at a promo uh, to take advantage of a promo, and I was going to move some more other assets over um, to do another promo. And I was informed that my BTC promo was cancelled, and I um, I called. The person I spoke to this morning around 11 a.m. is unsure. He doesn't know. Well, and uh, he sounded lucky, like he was from Europe. Lucky, uh, lucky for you, Zach here on this call has uh, magic <laughs> powers. He has superpowers, yeah. and, and and he can uh, make sure that you that you we reinstate uh, the promo that you had. Yeah, please just DM me your um, Celsius email, and I can look you up and, and get everything taken care of. Sounds good. Perfect. We'll do. Now, the other thing is, I was going to take a, um, advantage of the um, um, the, um, the other promo. So, but if I move stuff over now, right? It's going to move go it to first. Customers. Move it first, and then they'll reinstate your promo. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I haven't touched it. I'm, I actually moved it prior to the. Uh, oh, all right. Move it for no. So. Um, the promo that was in question was BTC. I'm moving another uh, um, uh, um, some more coins over, but it's going to go into custody now, right? Because I'm not accredited, correct? Right, correct. All right. So if I'm moving that over, um, because we had an alarming uh, kind of an event happen. Um, I never received the notification. So Coinbase um, basically says now that if they go bankrupt, um, they're going to hold all their customers' crypto assets. That's what basically was announced. Uh, on, on, not yeah, on my I account. Just, but, yeah. I just saw that, that there, there was a statement made in their financial reporting that said if they were to go bankrupt, their depositors would be treated as um, unsecured lenders. Correct. So now I got to literally unload almost all of my uh, positions that I have at Coinbase. And I know you guys could handle some of them, not all of them. Um, so that's, yeah, that just happened. Um, I never, my account never received um, that notification yet, but uh, a friend of mine's account did. And um, I had no clue what was going on. Literally no clue what was going on. Until... Coinbase sent Coinbase sent out a notification saying that. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yep. Coinbase sent a notification when my friend logged in, and uh, she kind of texted me. I'm like, "What's this about?" And so I went into Coinbase, and I never got that notification. So I was just thought it was her geo um, location uh, where she was at. Turns out it's not because it's addressed to the whole to everybody. And uh, then Corey, I don't know who he is. I think he's one of the people at Coinbase um, kind of confirmed that whole situation. So now um, what, it, what it basically reads is that 
if they go bankrupt, um, their, um, I guess, all your coins are then become unsecured and it becomes their property and so on and so forth. So that's not a good situation right now. Yeah, not not a good situation. Uh, the stock took a beating uh, after hours today because uh, they missed their numbers. I think they lost something like 430 million or something like that for the quarter. So obviously yep. not a good... Uh, again, none of this is good for crypto. Uh, uh, they are they were the first company to go public, right, in our space. And again, unfortunately... As I mentioned before, you know, it wasn't a good sign that their CFO sold all her shares on the first day of trading. Um, so these are not good situations for all of us, right? Because, because basically Coinbase basically locked the doors behind them. <laughs> they, they made sure that no other crypto company can go out because um, they lost so much money for their uh, shareholders, right? So... Um, but anyway, look, we, we do have some good news for... Uh, non-accredited us we're going to be offering a staking for non-accredited us and uh, i think it's going to come sometime in july so so your your eth your ada your cardano uh, obviously the and the other coins your favorite coins solana and so on anything that's a stakeable coin that we will be offering staking for you'll be able to do from your uh, unaccredited account because the way we understand the regulation today, uh, that is not earned and that is not restricted for unaccredited. So, so I think that's a very uh, encouraging thing. And uh, again, you'll be able to do it in your segregated account, which we don't rehypothecate, right? So the whole point is that we don't lend it out. We don't use it for institutional lenders and all that stuff. The only thing that happens there is that if it's a stakeable asset, we just take it for you. And we charge a small fee, but you get all the rewards in your non-accredited uh, account. So, you, wow. so just to clarify, you're saying that uh, we'll be able to offer staking on all of those staking assets uh, to non-accredited U.S. Uh, users. Yes. And that's coming in July. Amazing. Love, love to hear it. Yeah. Wow. That is absolutely amazing news. Oh, that is wow! Way to go! That's good. That's good. Well, um, we told we told you we're gonna work a solution, and uh, again, I don't have an exact date. <laughs> I'm still waiting for an exact date, but uh, you know, we're uh, we're fighting for all the little guys who. Uh, and again, it's a shame. Bitcoin obviously doesn't stay. There's no staking with Bitcoin, so I'm sure uh, many of you are just gonna have more other coins instead of having more Bitcoin, but. It is what it is. Alex, you just made my night. Oh, that's incredible because like I'm now wondering, okay, now what do I do with yeah, my other holdings? So like okay, that's that's brilliant. Well, you, you don't have to come to this channel only when we don't pay your uh, what do you call it? Your reward, <laughs> the <know>? reward, no. <laughs> well, hey, I'm I'm truth be told, I've been doing a lot of shows uh, and touring. I did my just my first I'm kidding, show. I'm just kidding, yeah. you know. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! Thank you so much, uh, Josh. Right. And guys, thank Listen, you. we all we all need to cheer up. Uh, these are hard days for all of us, right? We all taking a lot of pain here, uh, as you can imagine. I obviously own more sell token than anybody else, and and uh, I'm hodling it, and it's painful. But uh, I own I own a lot of Bitcoin. I own a lot of Ethereum, right? And and th that's where your hodling is tested. It's tested on weeks like this where you didn't do anything. You did what you're supposed to do, and the markets are just punishing anyone, anyone who is not, uh, uh, who's in the way, right? So if you're uh, trying to save, if you're trying to make it to retirement, the markets are just going to test you, right? They're going to punish you, punish you, see if you can take the pain. And and those who did this in 2014 and, and 2017 and 20. Uh, 2020, right? They're still here, and their, their their bags are worth more than before. And those who cave in and gave up are are uh, in the fiat world, thinking that they're gonna do better. Like uh, you know, and obviously they own stocks or other things that are getting beaten up even more. I think uh, most of these stocks got got beaten up even more than Ethereum, right? In in terms of losses. So so Ethereum and Bitcoin are actually outperforming. 
many of the pure uh, uh, tech stocks, right? Not talking about Amazon or Apple, but I'm talking about the more, you know, the heavy, um, you know, kind of stay-at-home stocks, whatever they're called. Well, I do have a question uh, regarding um, what's coming down the line. So we've definitely seen a lot of um, downward pressure, um, people panicking, people selling. Uh, my main concern comes a little bit later this year when the Treasury slash Fed decides uh, to offload their balance sheet with those bonds. And that's going to even create a bigger problem and put more pressure on the market as it will literally cause more issues and, and downward pressure. And depending on when they kind of execute this um, rebalancing of their balance sheet or offloading of their balance sheet, um, if it's timed with uh, one of their rate increases, that could also push certain... Well, it will definitely push the market down because uh, of its uh, you know, effects. Like, you know, interest rates are going to go up. They're going to... Um, well, yeah, yeah. Look, first there's, you know, like the Chinese uh, circus uh, ladies that can spin 20 different plates and throw 20 balls in the air and they can manage all of that at the same time. This is kind of what's happening to our markets right now. You have 20 plates spinning. You have balls in the air. You have people flying on a trapeze. And, and uh, the show, uh, it's very confusing show right? Uh, so you have to watch everything. You can't just watch one of the plates, right? You focus on one of the plates. That's not what's happening. So, so for example, if you look at the U.S. dollar, right? Like if, if you think of U.S.T., right? The title of this show is all about U.S.T. and what's going to happen to the U.S.T. Well, how about U.S.D., right? The U.S. dollar, right? The U.S. dollar is the highest it's been in, I think, 20 years. Why is it the strongest? Why, why are uh, hundreds of billions of dollars flowing into the U.S. dollar, right? If, if we're going through chaos, if we're going through inflation, if we're going through all of this, um, uh, the stock market, uh, NASDAQ lost 25% of its value. Many of the stock lost 80% of their values, right? So how, ca how is this possible, right? So again, we are the prettiest house in a really, really na bad neighborhood called fiat currencies. Right. So 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 when all this all these plates are spinning, right, you you're basically looking to see, OK, which one of them is the most stable one? Which one of them is going to fall last and break last? Right. So right now, everybody's leaving other currencies, for example, the Argentinian peso. Right. The, they just took a twenty five billion dollar emergency loan from the IMF. Why? Because the, that plate is about to fall off and break. Right. So they rent to the IMF. They said, please, we beg you, give us a loan. Right. And the IMF said, IMF said, sure, here, here is a loan. Just make sure that none of your banks and no one in your country issues any crypto. That was the only condition for the loan. I'm serious. And the, the next day, the central bank shut down their two largest banks who were about to start offering crypto to everybody in the country. Right. So so the show must go on. And again, all you have to change is one letter instead of UST to USD. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, you, you think UST is a crazy uh, situation? Well, look at what's happening with US dollars, right? You have hu crazy inflation, 30 trillion in debt outstanding just from the US government, 30 trillion, 120 more trillion in unfunded liabilities on top of that, right? And people cannot buy dollars fast enough. People liquidating everything they have and they put it into dollars because they're afraid of everything else. Right? That's what's happening every day, every minute. More and more and the dollar is pushing higher and higher and higher. You know, it's like the penguins in the, in the, in the Antarctica. You know how they huddle together tighter and tighter and tighter in the circle trying to stay warm? That's what's happening with the U.S. dollar right now. I agree. So, but so we we're all trying to escape all of that, right? We're trying to take something that has scarcity, 
and we're all being tested. You know, Michael Saylor is being tested. You see his stock in the last few days? Yep. Right? You think he's being tested? You think you have problems? You think your promo code doesn't work? His promo code doesn't work either. <laughs> and and he his promo code is for like $6 billion. Zach, can you fix his promo code, please? Come on. <laughs> yeah, right on that one. Would love to fix this promo code. Harry, uh, any other thoughts up here on stage? No, mate, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome, Zach, thanks. I'll uh, message you. Yeah, I'll message you. Yep, got it. Yep, yep. Thanks for joining, Harry. Guys, uh, share the room out. We've uh, broken through our record of 550. Let's see how big we can get this room. Let's uh, expand our voices here. Uh, Guarov, I think I said that. Probably said it wrong. You're up next. Hey, good morning to all. This is Gaurav from India. It is, it is Asian. It is Asian country in India, largest country in population. In India, crypto and UST recovery is must required to improve. Crypto is very important for us, so I don't understand about it more. Anyone can explain it? Anyone can explain it? Break in crypto and Bitcoin. How can we start a first time in crypto and Bitcoin? And how can we invest and earn money by this, this company? So anyone can, can explain it in brief. Thank you. Um, uh, crypto in general? Yeah, I was trying to understand. The, was he asking about crypto or a specific coin? I thought he was asking about UST. That's what it sounded like to me. Okay, so let's try. I'll, I'll give it a try. And we, uh, other people can chime in as well. So, um, so FX or foreign uh, exchange um, is really always two different currencies. So you can't just trade the dollar. You have to trade the dollar versus the... Japanese yen, or the dollar versus the British pound, or the dollar versus uh, something else, right? A, a stock or a bond, or but in most cases, FX is always another fiat currency, right? And and uh, there is a difference between again the supply and demand for different currencies, and that's why they go up in price or down in price, right? And basically, the same way, uh, if you go into the crypto world. Uh, the crypto world wants a representation. It wants something that connected to the dollar, but there's no real dollars. There's no bank accounts. There's no banks or anything like that in the crypto world. So instead of having uh, dollars, we, we took something that represents a dollar, right? So you, USDT or USDC is a token. It's no different than any other token, right? The, they're ERC-20, meaning they're, they're just like um, um, any other token, like the cell token and USDT are, are exactly the same token from a technical standpoint, right? It's just that USDT, one USDT token represents $1 and one cell token represents the one cell token out of the 695 million that exist in circulation. So, so companies issued uh, tokens saying, hey, Every time, here are the rules, here's the rule book, just like in Monopoly of a rule book, this company, uh, Tether, and another company called Circle, issued a rule book that said, look, uh, any one of these tokens at all times can be redeemed for $1. There's no connection between the token and the dollar. There's no, uh, you know, one lives on a smart contract in the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain, or the Tron blockchain, or the Algorand blockchain, right? USDT ex and, and USDC exist on multiple blockchains. And the other one is just money sitting in a bank account. The two are not connected. The only thing that connects them is the rule book that exists from the issuer, from the company that issues it. And because of that, everybody on the blockchain can uh, accept or imagine that these assets actually represent real dollars in the real world. And then trading can happen. Then if all of us believe that one USDT ERC-20 token represents $1 and I can always redeem it for a dollar, we can always trade that against Bitcoin or that against Ethereum or that against 
a synthetic uh, stable coin. What is a synthetic stable coin? It is not backed by any dollars in any bank accounts. The contract for or the rule book for UST is a smart contract. It's, it's just a, a piece of code. Probably, I didn't look at it, but it's probably, I don't know, three or 400 lines of code. It's not a lot of code that describe how two uh, functions work together, UST and Luna, right? You mint Luna, one, $1 of Luna creates one UST. You burn UST, you get $1 of Luna. One is floating, Luna price is floating, UST price is fixed. It's fixed to the dollar, but it's a synthetic representation, meaning it does not have a contract in the bank account and actual assets on the other side. So that's kind of, I would stop here and, and if anyone else wants to chime, but those are the functions that exist in the uh, crypto world that represent dollars. Hi, uh, this is Ron over here. I actually work at a publicly traded company building on the Terra blockchain. So I can uh, definitely fill in. The Wall Street Journal is quoting my research tomorrow. Um, Alex, what you said is 100% true um, about <coughs> Terra. What I want to just add um, to it is two things. One, wait, one wait, makes... tell, us, tell us how many lines of code. <laughs> uh, I don't have the exact lines of code, but I can pull that number up quickly for you later on, on the spaces. Uh, but yeah, um, the Terra blockchain, um, what makes it unique is that if you're like in a real life store in South Korea, convenience store, you buy something with Korea Venmo. Uh, you get a 3 to 5% discount. How does that happen? It's because the person, the merchant, is taking Korea Venmo. And because you're taking Korea Venmo, they're not paying a credit card processing fee. That saves a 3 to 5%. They pass it on to the consumer in the form of savings. So consumer is happy. They get a discount. Merchant is happy. They don't pay a credit card processing fee. There actually is a small 5 to 10 cent transaction fee. The 5 to 10 cent transaction fee feeds the Luna token from all the networks around the world similar to that. And that creates a stream of cash flow that gives it intrinsic value, which makes it different than a lot of other blockchains because there's actually payment streams unlike Bitcoin. And I love Bitcoin. I hold Bitcoin. Um, wait, 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 but but is that fee, is, is that, how does that fee, where does it come in? Does it come in the form of Luna or does it come in like fiat? Uh, UST is a UST fee. And here's the okay. thing with Luna, with the Terra ecosystem, no one wants to go to Starbucks and buy something with 0. 0.00014 ETH, right? They want to go to a, they want Starbucks and buy like a latte for five bucks. With the Terra ecosystem, it's like blockchain for normies and that you could go and buy Starbucks with five dollars, but it's a stable coin, but you don't realize you're using blockchain technology. It's, it's just five bucks for you. And that's what makes it different and scalable. Unlike USDC or Tether, it's algorithmically created through that seniorage mechanism that Alex was eloquently explaining. And because of that, it has infinite scale, expansion, and contraction ability to be used in real-life payments. So that's what makes Terra so elegant. I believe that Ethereum is a predominant blockchain of the future. And if Ethereum is a predominant blockchain of the future, any other blockchain has to be really good and specialized at something. Terra was built from day one to be specialized for financial payments and ecosystem because it has a stable coin in mind. That's why no other competitor to Anchor Protocol will have the exact same mechanisms because they don't have it built from the ground up. It's like trying to have an oil, oil car replace the engine with an electric battery versus building an electric car from the ground up and having the batteries all laid out on the bottom architecting the car to be electric from the ground up. That's what the Terra ecosystem is. Uh, it's executed for that. The second point, real quickly, sorry I'm talking a lot, is that this attack was orchestrated by two wallets. This is what I was actually just sharing with the Wall Street Journal. You could actually look at on-chain analysis and look at all of the um, transactions. And that's what you do not get in the stock market that you get in the blockchain world, is that it's so financially transparent. You can see what everyone is doing in real time, and you can watch the manipulation happening and have someone on Twitter point it out. This is what makes Celsius so amazing. Uh, what Bubbles. happened was it was two accounts that had slowly built up in Anchor, and then they liquidated from there. But the real thing that happened was that UST was moving to four pool. So they had transferred a lot of UST out of curve to move it to four pool. It was that exact moment when this liquidation happened because if four pool was established, it would absorb 90% of the liquidity of today's attack. But because it was not established yet, all an attacker had to do was sell 300, swap $300 million of UST to USDC 
And that was enough to start a DPEG. And then it caused uh, cascading events when you have a bunch of, uh, you know, robo articles or like new social media accounts say negative things. The moment something like Binance stops withdrawals, that gets amplified a lot. And I have a Twitter thread where I actually go through and give screenshots of all this information. So more than happy to share. But this right, is so what's let, great. Let me, let me mm. ask you a question. So yes, the, the only reason to do that was either a competitor wants to kill uh, Luna yes. plus U- UST or or somebody who managed to go short UST and they wanted DPEG because they wanted to basically create the DPEG to earn profit. So which, which one of the two you think is happening here? The answer is both. Uh, someone actually made around $800 million off the trades over the last two days. Um, and it's very similar to George Soros attack on the Bank of England, actually very similar to it. Um, it's just in the blockchain world. And you, you're looking at the precipice. Anchor just went down from 20 to 18.5 and near protocols competitor to anchors coming up. Uh, and uh, Tron's competitor is coming up. Right. And uh, this is all very timely and coincidental happening at the exact moment when Terra when Terra pulls out of curve is when this attack happened. And it came from two main wallets that you can track the on-chain activity to over $400 million of activity. So um, UST is stable in the Terra world, but what happened was they expanded too quickly in cross-chain. And by expanding too quickly, they don't have a lot of liquidity. And Celsius, you know this <laughs> because you deal with such large AUM numbers, is that when you have low liquidity, you're subject to a large spread and with a stablecoin DPEG scenarios. And uh, what's happening here is similar to what happens in a penny stock. When a penny stock has like low liquidity, you can easily cause this price to go out of whack. But for a stablecoin, it's even worse because if a stablecoin goes out of whack, everyone freaks out because it, it defeats the whole point of the stablecoin, right? So it was a marvelous attack. Props to the engineers but, who but thought how, about it. How did, they, how, did, <laughs> how did they go short USD? That's what I don't understand because you can't really borrow USD. And if you mint it, then you're long it uh, ne- anyway. So the only the only way to borrow uh, the only way to go short UST is if Luna lent them uh, UST, right? Or you know, or something like that, right? So 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 I'm trying to understand. Yeah. What, so yeah. so th- th- this is what you call a death spiral because it's algorithmic. For one dollar UST creates one dollar Luna, vice versa, and that's seesaw. But what happens if people sell both UST and Luna at the same time, right? And then it causes like a chain reaction event. And in this way, no, Luna, I, I understand. I yeah. understand what happens. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that if I hold USD and I create a chain reaction, I lose a lot of money, right? So the only reason I would do this is if I, for example, borrowed USD. I didn't buy it. I borrowed it, and I have to return USD. And if I can return USD at seventy cents, that 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 I borrowed a dollar, then I'll book that eight hundred million profit. So somebody. Lent me UST. Who lent me? Not not me, obviously. But I'm just saying. Yeah. The the perpetrator here, and and it's a very look. I I I don't dismiss in any way what you're saying. I think this was obviously well organized and and had clear intention of destabilizing uh, Luna UST. Which I, I don't know if you heard me in the beginning of the of this uh, when I just joined, but I said that nothing that's happening here is good for crypto or good for any of us, right? Any kind of shakeout like this is hurting all of us and innovation and hurting the entire community. So, so, uh, some obviously on your side, yeah. I'm just trying to, understand Oh yeah, totally. The, the trigger. Yeah. Um, so whether they got the UST through a loan or they naturally acquired it over a long period of time, unsure, um, that is still to be determined, but they had UST to begin this attack. And yes, they needed to sell a lot of UST for USDC. And they had, they needed a lot of UST in Anchor Protocol, which they did. There was a, an, a large amount being put in Anchor Protocol around the six months preceding uh, this event for at least the two largest wallets. And just a, a plug to Celsius, all of this stuff is crazy. It's highly unregulated. There's a bunch of math and computer science PhDs that are thinking of amazing ways to manipulate the entire market. What makes Celsius amazing is that you have a team that does the on-chain analysis, that does the research, that has safety valves and keeps these things safe so that you pr- are protected against yourselves in true DeFi. Because in DeFi land, people get greedy. 
I was on a Twitter spaces where someone sold his house to get a bunch of Luna at $115, right? So the leverage is insane. And what Celsius does is one, mechanically protect you on its app. And two, have a team of people like I know Joshua works at your company. He's one of the smartest people I know from John Hopkins. And the, the people that are there to always analyze it so that people like us, the normies, we don't have to think and worry about this stuff every day. And I only know this for Terra because I work at a Terra company. If this happened in Solana, I would have no clue what's going on. I would be so afraid right now to see something going down 50% in one day. And the fact that Celsius is here to say, you don't have to be afraid, we think about this for you, I think is really amazing. And moments like this are when everyone in this Twitter spaces should really appreciate the value proposition of Celsius, even if you see true DeFi, might have higher rates or more attractive opportunities financially. Celsius is the one that long term keeps you safe. Hey, so, hey, you you must be a plug in because we have a six hundred and sixty six listeners right now. <laughs> Who well, sent you? That is uh, too too little of a co co coincidence. Six six six. What's your name? Who are you? Send us a picture. Alex. We met at Decentral Miami. I was a short Asian boy you met. I started the Celsius Discord group. I like, love it. No, I talked I'm just... to you when we were doing Clubhouse. It's all right. I actually I work at a it. blockchain company now, so I haven't been on in like half a year. But I just wanted to come on and kind of explain this situation and just know that it's because I work at a Terra company. I know this. If this happened in Cardano, I have no frigging clue and I'd be scared out of my mind. And the fact that Celsius give universal peace of mind is fantastic. God bless all of you here. Well, I appreciate you noticing, and, and obviously, thanks for being a supporter. And look, again, we, we don't have our own blockchain. One, one of the things that most people don't understand about Celsius is that we're one of the very, very few people who does not compete with any of you guys, right? So uh, Crypto.com has their own blockchain. Binance has their own blockchain, right? All these people, one way or another, are competing with Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Luna, and everybody else. So... Everything they're doing, sometimes they're doing it in your interest, your meaning Bitcoin or Ethereum, and sometimes they're, they're doing it against you because they have a reason, right? They have an incentive to promote their chain and not your chain. So right? there's actually a rumor that the entity that loaned Terra the Bitcoin for LFG fund on the OTC market is the one who shorted Bitcoin in order to drive the price down. Because when Terra crashed, it also crashed the Bitcoin market and the whole crypto market. And now Janet Yellen is talking about uh, Terra today as a way to create regulation on the whole crypto system. So that is something where you don't know who your counterparty is and how they're acting or not acting against you. And that is something to be fearful of unless you have an entity like Celsius that knows all of its counterparties and the relationships um, where they can protect you against those situations, right? And like, it's whacked up. Like in the, I used to be a venture capitalist. You always look at the team, team, team when it comes to investing in a startup. But in crypto land, half of the teams are pseudonymous. You don't actually know their real identities, right? And then so like people just look at these crazy numbers and the, these mathematical formulas and they don't look at the heart and soul and the moral integrity of these people, which is why I like whether it's BlockFi or Celsius or any of these intermediary companies that has closer visibility to the relationships, especially in such a scary, volatile market that the average retail person doesn't know about half these projects, which are like a non-based. Well, look, um, it's probably Jamie Dimon who issued that loan, you know. Um, but again, not, none of this is good for our community. I mean, we definitely don't need regulators or the government using this situation to issue draconian laws to, to kind of uh, put a bear hug around crypto, right? I mean, that's exactly the situation that uh, people were looking for. Um And yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because on, well, not funny, it's sad because on, on Wall Street, if you're creating a spiral, like a debt spiral, we're using uh, warrants or things like that, you go to jail for that. I mean, that's kind of stuff that's pretty heavily regulated. But here, you're issuing a loan to a DAO, uh, no one's going to file a lawsuit against you, right? No one's going to fight you on this. So, so it's, a, and it's offshore entity that, uh, um, all the participants in the market really cannot, it's almost like protecting you from a lawsuit if you're instigating this action against the community. 
And the community can't take action because the DAO uh, will not take action. It's almost like a buffer. It's a, you know, it's uh, unfortunately doing the opposite of what it should be doing, right? And and Celsius is, a, a company like Celsius is acting uh, as a common denominator. It unites all of our interests, right? We're all uh, doing this together. We're all earning uh, yield here together um, in our best interest. So we have 900 people, almost 900 people who are doing all this work that you're talking about and and it's a lot of work right it's constantly checking and verifying and looking into all this detail you bring up such a great point about DAOs, um and like even if you look at sushi swap it was so hard for them to change your team dynamics even with huge scandals imagine if you're a DAO and you're just trying to fire someone for sexual assault or harassment that's still a, a amazingly difficult and like I'll, what i'll just say before i shut up is there is a reason why corporations were invented 100 years ago, right? <laughs> and they do things very well, whether it's Celsius or any other corporation. Um, they, they do things well, and it's for profit, and it's for shareholders and equity owners. And uh, it, it works. So, yeah, you're 100% right there. Well, it works if the comp- people running the company are focused on the customers. I mean, JP Morgan is a corporation also. But it's definitely forgot about its customers and it's only focused on its shareholders. Founder led and founder backed company. Sorry, I should have put that disclaimer in there. Yeah. So just uh, we all, I mean, Coinbase is, is a corporation, right? It's uh, definitely focused on its shareholders, not on its uh, customers. Cash, thanks for joining us up here, or Ronald. Thanks for uh, coming in up the stage. Feel free to hang out. I miss you, Josh. I miss you, Zach. I haven't talked to you guys in too long. Yeah. See ya. All right. Bye. Yeah, man. Thanks for joining. Uh, next up, I believe we got Ron Paul. Hello, everybody. Can you listen me? Uh, can you listen to me? Okay. Nice. You sound a little Hello. different, Ron Paul. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, this is a uh, an old meme. Uh, my real name is uh, Arthur, so you. So you can call me Arthur. Um, first, let me first tell you that um, a libertarian can spot another libertarian a mile away. And I think Alex is is pretty clear, <laughs> one of the best examples. Uh, I think it's obvious uh, his deep uh, knowledge in uh, financials, monetary, Austrian economics, and um, and also his, uh, his experience uh, since the dot-com bubble. And I usually agree with 100% to, from what he said. I agree with everything he has said so far, so he still hasn't break that record. But um, my, issue, my issue and uh, the reason I'm here is to know if I was seeing some tweets about uh, uh, Celsius joining a sort of bailout to the Luna ecosystem. And um, I wanted to know if that is uh, set in stone, if it's still being worked out. Because in my opinion, what uh, Luna and Terra has been doing is completely reckless. Many people predicted that. And uh, I don't know if it was, uh, I I have seen those reports about an external actor, but I, as Alex uh, told you, in extreme uh, fear markets, uh, crypto follows exactly the stock market. The stock market fell down, crypto follow it. I edge also my portfolio, both crypto and stocks, and I did the same. I went a little bit net, net short. The first thing I did was short Luna because it's highly volatile, and uh, and I'm still shorting waves. Uh, it's well, the same. Uh, how, how much of a bailout do they need at this point? You know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah. retra- it's retracted so far, and I don't. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to tell is that uh, this could could have been seen by a mile away. Uh, you had like Lil Lil uh, Alden warning about that. You had a bunch of blogs. We have like a small play- uh, playground that happens with waves. Like I was telling people. Watch what is happening here in Waves because this will happen to Luna, so be ready to take advantage of this. And uh, I don't think, I think if there was an external, external entity, 
yeah, it was genius. He was perfectly timed, and I and the retail uh, enlarged the 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 fall. Uh, but I, I'm sure that Alex agree with uh, with me. But uh, once you have a currency that lose confidence and uh, and trust, there is very little thing you can do. So I'm uh, I'm very. I disagree with uh, with that principle of bailing out uh, the Luna Foundation. I think it's not something that uh, uh, Celsius should be involved with. It's uh, it's just my view. Maybe you should. I don't know if you want to ex see what the community thinks in a pool or something like that. But I think in such a fearful market, I think Celsius has to differentiate itself as a a place of value and trust and uh, cannot cannot uh, support such algorithms because i think if you are going to sell something that is already selling off, selling off and uh, selling another asset that is highly correlated it's like uh, se selling more dollars on top of dollars that will just depeg for the value and uh, dilute if it was back for something like gold or Pax G, something that is not cor uh, correlated with crypto, maybe this didn't happen. But well, what stopped? Well, what stopped Terra from shorting themselves through all these other, you know, all these other assets? I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. So they could have made, made a fortune. I don't know, but what I can say, uh, what I'm trying to, I was trying to see what is the current position of Celsius and Alex on this matter. Uh, yeah, so I, I saw the article in, I think it was Coindesk, uh, right? It, it, it was talking about uh, Jump and uh, FTX and Celsius. I, I don't know why they didn't, um, well, at least they didn't reach out to me. They might have reached out to somebody else, but they didn't reach out to me or anything like that. We, we're not, uh, our job is not to bail out anybody, right? We're not, uh, uh, that's the job of the, of the Federal Reserve, we leave it for them to do bailouts and bail out the banks every time something bad happens, you know. So crypto does not have a, a Fed or a bank of last resort. Again, the Fed was created in 1907 as part of this uh, after the collapse of, uh, of all, all, basically all banks collapsed in uh, 1907. It was a huge uh, meltdown of the banking system, people standing in line trying to withdraw their money and they couldn't withdraw their money. And after that, I think 1913, I don't remember the exact year, but the Fed was created as a, an association of all the banks, right? It's effectively owned by all the banks. It's not a government entity. Even though it's called the Federal Reserve, it doesn't have, uh, it's not federal and doesn't have any reserves, right? So, so I definitely don't believe in that system. Uh, I think that system has created the ills that we have in society today, created more and more uh, separation between the rich and the poor. And uh, unfortunately, again, most of the countries in the world have adopted the central bank model because um, I think the first central bank was actually Bank of England, right, to be established. Before Bank of England, there was an attempt in... Uh, I think Norway and one in, in Holland, but both of them failed. Those central banks failed. And Bank of England, I think 1670-something, I don't remember the exact year, but was the first kind of central bank to, to do well. And, and uh, I don't know about doing good, but definitely did well. Uh, so here in crypto, we are experimenting with a completely different system, right? And we're experimenting, like I know Jump, and uh, Luna has, uh, Terra Luna has a very long standing relationship. They're working very well together. And Jump has been providing a lot of the liquidity and trading and market making uh, on Terra and USD. And uh, again, I don't know any details. It's not like I'm privy to any information. I said that in the beginning of this call as well. But we are not uh, lending or provided any loans or done any bailouts. So with the project uh, we listed it uh, obviously we have customers that own usd and luna and uh, um, that's the extent of our involvement so 
Um, I think, again, the crypto in general is going to have failures, right? There's going to be projects. We already have hundreds of projects that failed, rug pulls and, and theft and whatever. And all these things are hurting, again, hurting the community, right? I mean, my view on all these things is, is it good for the community or is it bad for the community? When I make quick decisions, it's because I know if it's good or bad for the community. It takes about one millisecond to know if an action is good or bad for all of us. And, and again, here, the attack is obviously a bad thing. And uh, uh, the attacker either had uh, financial gain, right? They were trying to get uh, financial gain or they were trying to destroy this company, this DAO, in order to uh, protect its own franchise or acting on behalf of somebody else. So um, either way, it's not a good situation. So it's uh, fake, that uh, article? It's not fake. I mean, it's, uh, you know, reporters can write anything. Right, they're basically okay. saying, yeah. like, we heard, we heard a rumor. We called all these people. They didn't reply to us." Okay, I see it. <laughs> Because right. the way it uh, it arrived to me was that uh, Celsius already already confirmed uh, a loan or a small fund well, to help. So, so if you're if you're trying to get people to give you a loan or whatever, you would put, pin one against the other. You would basically say. You know, uh, you know, you would go to one guy and say, hey, the other guy told me he's going to do something. You want to do it? Right. Yes or no. Yeah. And things like yeah. that. So, again, I, I don't think this was initiated by uh, uh, Luna. I'm just saying that reporters, um, you know, do whatever they want. They don't necessarily follow uh, the facts. Okay, that's uh, really good to hear. Uh, maybe a small Uh, question or small feedback is it possible that in the future maybe we could see i know you have a really good uh, risk uh, ass assessment team i know it comes mainly from banking etc uh, but is maybe is maybe possible to per coin could you like break down more or less how it's being applied if it's being stake sec landing uh, just to be a little bit more transparent it doesn't have to be uh, refreshed or updated Uh, every minute, but uh, just to know a little bit where, uh, uh, how, and uh, if if that is possible. Maybe you don't want to share that information, but, but yeah, for transparency, if that could be done. That's happening on all of our coins right now. So, like uh, staking assets, a good example of multiple uses. Um, it kind of creates a base for staking rewards, but then if there's lending or rehypothecating opportunities beyond that, then we'll consider lending them out, right? And and make sure that's risk adjusted. So like the whole job of Celsius is to deploy the yield as effectively and as safely as possible. Um, and we do that in a whole number of ways. Well, yeah, I, I know. You, you were asking you were asking about which coin. I, I didn't hear the... Um, for example, I imagine you you do stack uh, at a stake and uh, at a lending. Uh, or probably the same with uh, dots. Well, yeah, look, it, it's very. Yeah. I, I ju just want to know a little bit how much of the percentages is being applied to staking, sec lending, uh, maybe how many parties are, are these being distributed in terms of sec lending. Just a little bit more transparent because you can do sec lending and, uh, and uh, staking to have an optimal uh, yield versus risk, I assume. So, so a few few things here. One, uh, Celsius is the only company in the world, okay, the only company on the planet, at least that I know of, uh, that gives you transparency into what we're deploying. So if you look at uh, when you get your Monday uh, rewards, right, uh, yeah. there's a link there that says proof of re of uh, uh, community, right, or rewards explorer. And if you click on that link, it will take you. It's these are zero proof side chains that verify that Celsius deployed and then paid you what you're supposed to be getting, right? Uh, so it's so it's a cryptographic proof that we're doing what we're telling you we're doing. Because if we don't have any activity, if we are like doing, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that, but that does not cover sec lighting. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just 
making a point that we're striving for as much. Oh yeah, yes, that I know. I know. So, so ADA, any any staking coin, uh, it's a very simple uh, math, right? So basically, let's say, I don't know, ADA pays I don't know six percent or five percent. I don't remember the the exact numbers, but basically, for us to do any other activity uh, besides staking, somebody has to pay us more than the staking fee. Otherwise, why would we lend? Why would we do sec lending if you are if we exactly. can just stake stake the coin? So, so we only do sec lending on these things when the rates spike because uh, somebody's willing to pay a higher rate. So basically, for ADA, most of the time it will just be staked, right? It will not be, uh, um, you know, lent out. So it really depends on um, on each coin and on its uh, rate. So for example. Uh, if USD is earning uh, whatever percentage, uh, it doesn't make any sense to lend it for less than that, right? So, so those are all things that that um, are self, I would say, self-explanatory from a deployment standpoint. Okay, uh, just so you agree that uh, more transparency is going to come. Uh, you are starting. Yeah, to yeah. Look, we 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 have nothing to hide. I mean, we're not uh, the opposite. We want our community to know as much as possible and. Again, I think yeah. uh, if you we did proof of reserves with uh, Chainlink, we did the uh, CCIP with Chainlink, right? I mean, show me anybody else is doing any of these things, right? So yeah, my my maybe my uh, what I'm trying to say or trying to to look for is what percentage, for example, can you sec lending just to one party i have no idea how much you say no we, we onboarded we so onboard, i think uh, i mentioned this before we onboarded over at least 250 institutions maybe more i don't okay. remember the exact number but at any time we would lend to up to 50 i would say we don't we're not trying to be the biggest lender and lend to as many as possible our, our job is to uh, lend out with the least amount of risk Right, so, and I, I assume you don't lend just to one person. You don't do that. We we do not lend coins to individuals. So we don't okay. do. We don't. Uh, we're not in that business. You, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me clarify that because somebody will jump and say, "Wait a second, I <laughs> took a USDC loan from you." So of course, yeah. retail retail people can borrow stable coins or dollars from us, right? As, against collateral, maximum fifty percent LTV. But but uh, if you want to borrow Bitcoin, you cannot borrow Bitcoin from us as an individual. You must be an institution or a hedge fund or something other than a person, right? And and uh, I don't think we even we don't, as far as I know, we don't offer it to accredited investors either. So even if you're a credit investor, you don't you cannot borrow coins from us other than okay. USDC. So okay, that so that's we don't do. Me. We're not in the business of uh, like all these exchanges and all these people who, again, wreck you when they lend you all kind of stuff and at the leverage and all that stuff. We don't do any of that, right? We we agonize when we need to liquidate a customer. Believe me, agonize over it. Try to yeah, give I, 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 Yes, I took the various loans. As possible, yeah. right? Like to help them. Yeah, with... I already took various loans and I never was liquidated and was able to transfer. So yeah. I have no issues. Right. I have no, only no, good I'm, experience I'm, I'm, from Celsius. You know, there's over 600 people on the call, so I'm just trying to make sure that they understand what we stand for, right? And unfortunately, again, most other companies that, like, there there are a few companies that te have, give you teaser rates uh, higher than Celsius, but then they steal from you when you do a swap or when you do a loan or when you do whatever, and you just don't understand it. You're like, you think to yourself, well, I'm getting an extra half percent so I'm ahead of Celsius, but then when you buy something, you're getting 10% less coins than, than the same transaction if you did on Celsius. So you tell me where you're ending up with more coins. So, so people, people don't have the time. They're, 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 they're busy, you know, they don't compare, and, and they, they fall for all these little bullshit tricks of, of like even Coinbase. Coinbase, when you stake oh, yeah. with them, they charge you 25%. And you don't understand yeah, it. No. They publish a rate, they publish a rate, and then they take twenty five percent of it. And you get and people tell me, but Coinbase gives me more money. I'm like, no, they don't. You have to deduct the rate. Celsius doesn't charge you 
a rate on the rate that we publish. We publish a rate. That's what you get. You know, that's how it should be, right? <laughs> so these are the things that make all the difference. And and uh, again, it pisses me off because, uh, you know, again, we if all we did in crypto is create these companies that charge us more than Wall Street, Coinbase charges higher fees than J.P. Morgan. Yeah. I'll say that again. And, uh, and Coinbase just to say is charging something. higher fees than J.P. Morgan. How is that possible? How are we letting them do that? And actually, if I understand correctly, the more funds move to Celsius, the more control you have on the overall uh, exchanges, right? Because if the exchanges don't have enough coins to lend, they yeah. have to come to you. So you can set no, the look, rates it, and is, you can set the risk and you know what they are doing. So right. you yeah, cool yeah, we, have also... leverage, we have leverage on them. What I'm saying is I, what I don't understand exactly. is how Coinbase is managing $240 billion. Like a lot of people must be really blind to the fees that they're paying. Right. And, and that's really what, what, again, look, a lot of these people are just going to leave crypto. We're going to lose all these people. They're going to go back from crypto land to fiat land. And, and that's what I'm fighting over. Again, you know, like uh, all of us huddling together, right, and not paying fees. We charge institutions fees. We do the opposite of what these guys do. Instead of Coinbase charging its almost 100 million customers fees, we charge institutions fees. That's who pays your yield, institutions, exchanges, you know, and so on, borrowers. So we reverse the formula and people insist on telling me, no, 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 uh, crypto.com is better. Well, do you, does crypto.com charge you fees? Yes, right? So how much in fees do they charge you? Did you check? Did you look? 2% <laughs> when you sell, I think. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> 2%. So, yeah. so if, so if I, I don't use you, Right. If I give you 5% on something and they give you 5.5% on something, right? Where are you going to be ahead? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's a matter of teaching people. And yep. I think uh, the, the how Celsius marketed to be like uh, word of mouth, I think works really great in that sense because you can you let people explain uh, person to person, friend to friend. So I think on the end that will pay very well. But thank you for your yep, answers. Sure. Uh, that were thanks very for transparent. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for coming up, Ron Paul. <clears throat> Next up is Spin. What's going on? Hey, guys. Thank you for taking me. Uh, Alex, uh, I had an experience with the customer service this past week that almost made me want to go back to the banks, and I hate the banks. Um, I'm just a year into investing. I believe Celsius is the best product out here after a year. I'm a hardworking dude trying to get my life in order. And I had some money set aside on UST. And I needed to buy my queen a ring. And I wanted to actually do a story for you guys because your loans helped me put down the, uh, the deposit. But when it came to get the balance, which is my own UST, and this was before all the bullshit happened, um... There was a glitch in the system that wasn't storing the memo IDs when I was setting my wallet addresses. And the first lady that took my call was amazing. But everyone after that, I feel kind of just was kicking the can down the road. And then by the time they acknowledged and they sent a bug report to the dev team, all hell had broken loose with Terra. So my UST has dropped in value like everybody else is holding. I can't access it. Uh, I was calling on Friday and I couldn't, they could, there was no managers on the weekend, even though crypto's 24 hours. So I've just become really frustrated as a client. Like I was ready to become an ambassador. I, I love you guys, but this experience has been really foul. Like a bank will hold my money for five days, but still release it. But I still can't get it. Like I've been setting up four different receiving wallets. Nothing's working. Um, I'm really frustrated, brother. And, and, I had to sell a bunch of crypto at a loss just to pay the balance in the ring to secure it. But this was going to be a very special moment in my life that I wanted to do a whole story about. And then it just turned into this fiasco. And I feel that the customer service team didn't hear me when I was explaining the bug with the memo IDs not being stored properly. So 
I just wanted to share this experience with you, brother. Like, uh, in a sense, I guess it's a blessing because I do believe in Luna and now seeing everything that's happened, I don't want to withdraw it. I'm actually buying more and trying to send it into Celsius, but that's stuck in cyberspace too. So it's just been a frustrating week and this was before all hell broke loose. It could have been averted. I could have got my UST out, or at least a portion of it that I needed. And, um, you know, there's no compensation or nothing. Even at a bank, I'd be able to get something out of those bloodsuckers, but it's just been frustrating. And I know there's bigger issues going on for everybody, but this started from Monday, Tuesday last week for me dealing with Celsius. And it's just left me with a really bitter taste in my mouth. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And I apologize, obviously, for any, uh, you know, inconvenience here. We got to look into it. I, I don't know. That's the first time I'm hearing about a problem on UST. But uh, <clears throat> I saw the the that they had some uh, blockchain problems. I saw, again, uh, Binance uh, shut down withdrawals because they had some problems on the blockchain as well. Uh, so we have to see if what um, what's happening and why it's being caused. Uh, do you know if they solved it since? Did they let you know if they solved it? Or oh, still... man, they left me hanging all weekend. I explained to them the urgency yeah. of needing to access the money. And I know the blockchain congestion happened Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday. But this was Tuesday. Like, for my issues, it was Tuesday. And if they were, yeah. they were listening properly, they could have resolved it. So it feels like Celsius held my USD hostage. Mind you, Alex, I, I, I believe in Luna. I am actually prefer that it didn't get sold because I don't want to contribute to everything that's happening. And I'm trying to bring more UST and more Luna in. But all I got today was an email saying that the dev team's working on it. There's nothing we can do. There's no compensation. Yeah. And no timelines of when someone's going to contact me. Like, that's not what... You advertise for your customer service center. Is not what I felt this week. Yeah, well, it's definitely not Celsius. So why don't you DM Zach and let us look into your case? Send him the the ticket number. Uh, so this way, it's easier for us to find the 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 chain of communications, and oh, we'll sure. see we'll see what we can do for you. And congrats on on your engagement or or, or marriage. So definitely. That's the most important thing. Everything else is secondary. You know? Yeah, I mean, Mon- the way, but yeah, I'll send it to Zach. I appreciate it. There is a sister named Kiara. She was amazing. She was the first one that took my call, and it all went downhill afterwards. But Kiara yeah. at the call center was amazing. I appreciate Thanks, it. We'll, we'll let her know. But uh, send us the ticket number, and we'll we'll dig into it, all right? And we'll see what we can do for you as well. Thank you so much, man. Yep. Thanks for coming up, Spin. Uh, not to crypto, you're up next. Yeah, you're slightly muffled, but yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, hi, Alex and team. Um, I have been a customer of you guys since appearing first in the Anthony Pompliano show. Um, and just following up, uh, when you were speaking to Jared Figueredo, um, the thing as you, I believe that Bitcoin is a storage of value, as you said. Um but I also believe it can work as a medium of exchange through Lightning um, because of the quick payments and the minimal fees. Um, that is why yesterday I sent an email to Celsius customers more about this. And I just wanted to know if Celsius is planning to accept Lightning payments or if you guys are planning of also creating custom Lightning addresses like, for example, Alex at Celsius.gg or something like that. Thank you. Yeah, so we're definitely looking at this uh, through Celsius X, and and we're looking to add uh, universal addresses that accept payments from all kind of different chains. Um, and so definitely, and it's obviously interesting technology. I know uh, um, several other companies, you know, like Jack uh, uh, Dorsey and other people are working on this as well. So we definitely want to collaborate with others as well and create a standard so everybody kind of uses the same addressing for the stuff and 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 that's uh you know that's the future right imagine if we all could just use an authenticated address for all of our receiving and sending instead of having all these uh, hashes (laughs) for a hundred different assets right that's crazy so um so it Yes, we are looking at it. Yes, we're uh, working on it, but uh, I don't have a date for you on when when it's gonna hit. 
Okay, perfect. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is that um, after watching the movie, uh, Trust No One, I don't know if you guys saw it, um, it made me think about who holds the keys, if it is like a multisig, or, when, or where can we research about social security if a scenario like Quadriga X happens where the CEO dies or something like that? Well, for, first... I don't have any keys, okay? So uh, I don't have permissions to access uh, any of the systems as a measure of security, right? And uh, all of our stuff is, is using MPC and other technologies. So MPC is multi-party computation. So it means we break the key into many, many parts. And uh, it's a combination of computers and people who are signing things. Um, and even in Celsius, when you do a large withdrawal, uh, the system will monitor it. And if it feels that there is something unusual, for example, you are trying to withdraw, like your wallet is in the in, in, uh, uh, IP address that's not your regular um, jurisdiction, or um, you are doing it during a time that you never withdrew before, like the middle of the night for you or something like that, any kind of... Uh, uh, you know, irregular activity. We usually put the slow, like slow down the transaction intentionally, just to make sure that we alert you and give you time to fix it if it's not really you, or um, if the address, the withdrawal address, is something that you didn't use before and things like that. So, um, so I've heard many cases uh, where people tell me, Celsius tell me, you know, they hacked my Binance account, they hacked my whatever account. And the only place where I still have coins is with Celsius because you guys didn't let the hackers in, even though I use the same password or I use the same login or whatever, right? So, uh, but on the back, back to the private keys, uh, again, Celsius was, I think, the first one to, to implement this MPC. Uh, we were the first ones to kind of go commercial with that, with, with Fireblocks and other companies. And now everybody's using it, right? Uh, every service, every one of our competitors uh, switched from using uh, other methods to using what Celsius is using. So uh, Quadriga was not using any of the stuff, right? And as you saw in the movie, the guy basically held the keys and we don't know if he's, uh, if he's dead or if he's pretending to be dead or what happened there. But, uh, you know, no such thing can happen at Celsius. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much for everything you do in this space. Yep. I wanted to, to uh, introduce uh, Tal to the stage. Uh, Tal and her team um, have been kicking ass um, with the loans for the past couple of days through all this hecticness. And just wanted to say appreciate your Tal, appreciate your work uh, and your team's work, Tal. And if you wanted to uh, say something to the group, please, uh, please go ahead. Hey, uh, almost good morning from Israel. Um, it's been a few rough days for the team, but everyone are working hard around the clock, actually. So we are here if you have any questions. And we are also working 24-7 on shifts on our loans desk via email. So we are also there if anyone wants to talk over email and doesn't want to talk about the loans and situations he has or she has right now with their loans uh, here on the spaces. But I'm here if anyone needs anything, of course. Is there anyone with a loan question on stage? If so, raise the uh, hand emoji. All right, and if there's anyone in uh, the audience that has a loan question, please don't be shy, tap on the mic and come on up. Uh, next up is 200% Lunatic. Yeah, good morning. And uh, thanks for uh, taking this space. So uh, as you can see on my name, I'm a little bit over-invested in Luna. And uh, obviously this has been, been horrible. I don't do like uh, like borrowing and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm relatively uh, okay. But uh, my question is, yeah, maybe you don't have the answer. Like, do you think there's uh, Luna can get back and the pack can get back from from this disaster? So, 
Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear the uh, the end of the question. What was it again? Yeah, do you guys think uh, Luna can recover and uh, the pack can recover from uh, from all of this? Do you still have faith in in Luna and Doe and the team? Well, again, we don't decide, right? It's not like Celsius uh, holds some magic wand and we somehow either give life or take life away from Luna. You know, it's not a uh, um, it's not up to us. We we are just one market participant, and and unfortunately, again, uh, we don't know if this was a coordinated attack or this was just uh, uh, the market uh, people taking advantage of the fact that uh, the stock market is going down so heavily that they thought that they could successfully attack uh, Luna UST, right? So um, the community has to vote, right? You heard the person before that. Uh, you know, that uh, had some UST stock on the platform and he he's now buying Luna as well. He's, he wants to support the platform. So if all of us support the platform, it will do well. And if all of us leave the platform, it's going to die. And it's the same thing is true for Celsius and the same thing is true for every other mm -hmm. project in crypto. It's a community-driven, all the projects are community-driven projects. And, and we vote with our pockets. Right, uh, we vote with our wallets. We either vote for, uh, like with Celsius, we're voting for all of us earning, all of us uh, being able to take loans, all of us uh, uh, having a platform with almost no fees. Uh, versus, if we use the competitor or if we use the Coinbase, uh, we're voting for uh, the platform that does charge fees. Right, so it's, we we decide with our wallets every day, every hour, every every transaction. So Luna uh, is the the judge, the jury, and the executioner for Luna is us. There isn't anybody else. Again, the Fed or some external organization is not going to come and bail it out. It's not going to fix it. And it's really up to the community. Either the community is going to decide we want this project and we're going to vote for it, we're going to buy it. I think I did see an, an increase in the amount of deposits on luna it was going down 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 and then i seen an increase and if there's going to be more increases right if you, people buy uh, luna and they buy uh, um you know usd then the project will do very well i mean uh, i i made uh, several comments that i think they do need to diversify their revenue they can't just rely on paying yield on anchor that's not a sustainable business model but as you heard from some of the other people in, in, in Korea, they have a very uh, good economy, very strong economy uh, uh, of, of basically uh, processing payments around the credit card companies, right? So around the, the go around Visa and MasterCard and other companies that are payment processors in Korea. And, and so that is a sustainable business model. And I, did, I do think they kind of grew a little bit too fast and they had a little bit of indigestion. But uh, again, it just jumped to 83 cents to the dollar. It was as high as 93 earlier in the day. And, uh, you know, minute by minute, we will find out if uh, all of us have voted yes or no for this project. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate yep. it. Thanks for coming up 200%. Next up is Lucia. Hey, everybody. Always good to hear the commentary here. And I hate to have something to complain about, but I do, unfortunately. Um, I've been trying to buy USDC in the app and uh, for about the last two and a half weeks, and I'm not able to do it. My bank recognizes that Celsius requested uh, a connection through Plaid. I use Plaid for other uh, companies with my bank. So all that's good on that side. I've talked to customer support. They sent it to the devs. I haven't heard anything and I'm getting frustrated because I would really like to buy some more USDC. Which bank? Hello, hey. Which bank? It's, it's Chase. Bank. Chase. Yeah. And they say, yeah, we see Celsius and go for it, basically. And it's my app that keeps saying, you got a problem, 
call customer support, insufficient permissions, and I don't get it because my bank is already saying, yes, we see Celsius, we see Plaid, it looks good, go for it. And you're in California, right? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. And it's been going on for like two and a half weeks. I'm getting frustrated. Um, all right, let us look at the ticket number. Send me or Zach uh, the ticket number and let's take a look. Uh, okay. I know there was... There was some issue with uh, some error codes not being forwarded to us properly. I don't yeah. know. We're trying to fix that. Okay. But that's really the. Um, let us dig into your case and 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 um, you know, obviously you've been a Celsian for a long time. A long time. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. So let us yeah. dig into it and see what's uh, what's happening. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate but it. In general. Despite this frustration, how is the new version with all the new bells and whistles? Oh, it's fabulous! It's all good. it's good. I'm really happy. I'm also happy to hear about the new upcoming staking, and uh, yeah, things are great. And I'm living the Celsius life, as you know. I yeah. already you know, gave a testimonial, and I'm um, heading to a class in Texas next week, next month rather. Then I'll be in the UK for the summer, so I actually won't be on these. Um, these Twitter spaces because it'll be too late, too early in the morning. So I'm going to be in the UK for this summer, and then I'm going to Central America. You know, I'm living the I'm living the dream here. It's great, amazing. I'm, yeah, it's we're amazing. jealous. It's we're amazing. Working, it is absolutely we're, amazing. <laughs> we're, we're working the dream while you're living the dream. Well, I thank you for work for working the dream. I appreciate it, and I also really appreciate hearing all of your market analyses. It's it's really great to hear you. All right, and you know I'm a big fan. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming in, Lucia. Reagan, you're up next. Hey, Josh. Thanks. I oh, was just hearing that one. Someone did say something about having uh, Citadel issues with um, the deposits as well. So maybe that's, I don't know, maybe a link. But anyway, um, I'll try not to butcher this question. But um, just talking about the um, non accredited uh, investors being able to stake uh, in July. I was just wondering, it might be too early, but um, so there are some assets that are pure stake and some assets that are stake and also uh, sec, sec lended, as far as I understand. How would the yield rates work if, let's say, you know, user A um, is able to earn interest as they normally have been and user B's? Um, can only sort of stake it. Would they be different, different yield rates depending on what you're sort of able to do, depending on on where you are? Cheers. Yeah. So the the staked rates uh, will well, the one that's 100 percent stake will just be probably publishing uh, uh, the staked rate. This is what we're getting, and then we'll publish what is our fee. So it'll just be a fixed fee against the uh, the published rate. Uh, so this way you know what we're earning based on our, uh, you can verify that, right? You can see the nodes and the and what we're doing and then basically you know what you pay us. So for example, if Coinbase charges you 25% and Celsius charges you, I don't know, 8%, you'll be able to do the math and see, okay, well, they both publish the same rate, but Celsius charges me, whatever, a third of the fees that that uh, Coinbase charges me, right? So that's the structure that we're going for. Again, I'm still waiting for legal and this and that, so it might change a little bit, but that's the idea to make sure that we're fully transparent and everybody can see everything. Sure. Okay, that sounds good. And is there any thoughts or trying to create some sort of um, sell token stake with, with within that? I know it's not a stake token, but is there some thoughts of trying to, to do that? Yes. Yep, yeah, so Cell Team 6 has a few surprises about Cell Token. Well, I think they're all good surprises, and uh, I'll wait for them to finish, and then we'll uh, we'll make some announcements. But uh, we're definitely doing a lot of work on the Cell Token, and uh, on, you know, I mentioned we have an NFT project. We have all kind of other things that are still in the works. Nothing has changed. And again, this year we we've had a tremendous amount of launches. It's it's just uh, shocking how little uh, attention we're getting. Considering again, we did on ramps and swap, and a credit cards coming up next month, and uh, you know, 
um, a lot of other things that are, uh, uh, you know, custody and everything else. And uh, <laughs> we, we're getting very little respect here. So, um, but we're going to crank it up. Like we, we're adding users, we're growing, right? And uh, we're adding assets, right? We're, we're going to go to, we're going to finish this year with over 100 assets, up from 55, I think we have right now. And I think we're and, about uh, to add I five, either this week or next week, um, five new assets. Yeah, yeah, I think this Thursday, right? So I think it's going to go live Friday. We have five new assets going live this Friday. And yeah, thanks for reminding me. So, um, so you know, a lot of a lot of good stuff. I'm 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 very happy, very excited about. Uh, and and again, almost 900 people, right? So it's 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 a it's it's a machine. <laughs> so, and the, uh, the other thing that's uh, interesting about our company is like during these really volatile times, this is where we make really strong revenues because there's much more lending taking place and it's been a really risk off market in general. And when events like this happen, then um, it generates a lot of business for us and, and therefore all of our users. Um, and then on top of that, I, I feel like um, the raise that we did for 700 million um, was very good for shoring up the company and making sure that we can handle these, these types of downturns and these events. Um, for an extended period of time, right? So the strength of the company's fundamentals um, have been reinforced in a really good way. And then the last thing I wanted to add was the um, kind of that reinforcement of cell token utility importance inside the ecosystem. Uh, I think, Alex, you don't talk about this publicly enough, but you really, over the past several months, have stressed this to all the team leaders, all the C-level executives, how... Um, cell token needs to be integrated in every single um, and really make sure that that's, um, you know, the the basis of all of our products have a core fundamental cell utility in them. Yep, definitely an important element. And uh, we are adding uh, a lot of, uh, you know, functionality into cell. And, and again, like I mentioned, uh, Tala mentioned before that, uh, May 17th, we're launching the loan functions on the web app. And again, we're going to be uh, afterwards adding more and more uh, things that also improve the cell utility and so on. But we're definitely upgrading uh, things. I, I know there's another release uh, on the web app, I think at the end of May, which is going to add all of the rewards. You'll be able to see all the rewards and everything right in the web app and in the app. So you don't have to go to the website. Everything will be bi built in and uh, improving the referrals and things like that. So a lot of bells and whistles uh, on top of, again, launching uh, whatever, two dozen or more uh, states with uh, on-ramps. So that's those are big things because, again, we had a lot of customers that uh, did not want to use Celsius because we didn't have on-ramps, right? They, they wanted that convenience. And they're like, I have it in Coinbase. I don't care if they charge me fees. I'm just going to, I like the convenience. You know, I don't want to, I want to go back and forth from my bank. So we finally uh, got all that done in a, in a great way with no fees. And uh, all of that uh, creates a lot of uh, value for our community. Any questions for Tal? We have the loan queen right here. I, I'm shocked that no one has any questions. Alex, a few people are reaching out and DMing me. I don't, so uh, there are questions. It's okay. All right. No public Sark questions. Nug. Yes. No public questions. Sark Nug, did you have a question about uh, loans? Yes, I did have a question about loans. So um, trying to do my best through this uh, escapade of pride act price action and um, as an ambassador tolling through, seeing um, other Celsians who I know um, may be in loans. And I ran into a kind of unique situation. Um, and I just kind of wanted your take on it. Um, I'll first preface, I advise them to email and, and call the service center, um, the loans email as well. Um, but the situation they were in, it appeared they had opened a loan prior to some state regulations um, being enacted. So he was getting, this individual was getting margin called and 
um, their state leg- wasn't letting them send in any coins. Um, so I just kind of want, and I'd never seen this um, situation, so I just kind of wanted to know how you guys react to that kind of circumstance. And if, you know, I did the right thing, I guess, just tell them to email and call in. Well, thanks. That's a good question. Um, you know, after a few weeks ago, we had an update to U.S. residents and a lot of things changed with uh, with loans as well when it comes to how to manage your, your loan. Um, there is a way to to move funds. It's just more manual for most places that are now restricted. Um, I would definitely just uh, do a uh, office hour call with our team, not with a call center, but actually talk to one of loans managers and one on one and see what the options are. Uh, I can't, it really depends on the states and what we can do per state. So I can't really answer here. This There's a lot of guidelines we need to follow per state, but I'm pretty sure in 98% we have a solution. It's just manual. I think it's only seven states or eight uh, states that we need to deal with differently. So definitely because it's a unique situation, uh, arrange the office hour call with our team or even if he can reach me here and Twitter, I'll make sure someone is reaching out and trying to help solving this. Awesome. Thank you for that response. I, I, I will instruct them to do so. Um, I, I got a two, another question for Alex, if that's all right. That will be the last question of the day. So you're the lucky winner. Woo-hoo. Nice. Um, so I was working the other day during during this conference, so I missed it live. But um, there's a lot of people that were um, excited about your uh, vision for CCIP and Celsius X. So I just kind of wanted to to know what you, what your end goal is with CCIP. Yeah. So by the way, there's a video, uh, like an hour long video recording of uh, uh, me and Carl uh, with the Chainlink team uh, doing this event in New York. So uh, I posted okay. it on Twitter, and it's also uh, on the Chainlink uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so if you guys want to get the full hour, there's uh, I definitely cracked a lot of dead jokes over there. There, I got, I had the whole crew uh, uh, rolling. Well, at least uh, that's what I thought they were doing. They were laughing at my jokes. So, and so CCIP and uh, proof of reserves are two very, very important elements, right? And I think, again, everybody's busy with all kind of stuff, and no, no, not a lot of people have time to dig into the tech or dig into the capabilities. Uh, but if we want to create uh, cross-chain uh, functionality, like well, that's what Celsius X is trying to do, if we want to create, uh, prevent a situation like we had with Axie Infinity where 600 million disappeared and no one noticed for a whole week that the, you know, the emperor had no clothes, uh, we have to use these type of technologies, right? We have to have real-time verification, real-time proof of reserves, cross-chain inter- interoperability protocols like the ones I just mentioned, right? And and uh, we got to stitch it all together. And, and the company that stitches it all together cannot have its own blockchain. If it has its own blockchain, it's going to play favorites, right? And again, most other people who are trying to do this have their own blockchain, right? And and they try to tell you, no, 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 our blockchain is special. We we are Polkadot or we are uh, uh, something else. And, and, you know, you can trust us. We don't have any incentive to promote this one versus that one or this project versus that project that we invested in and so on and so on. So, um, so the, the, the beauty of decentralization is that we can basically stitch, put together and stitch together different things and make them work together. And they all supposed to represent our best interest, right? And, and that's a piece where it's hard. Uh, when you have an anonymous creator or you have incentives that not necessarily are working long term, right? You basically may be creating short term incentive for yourself, but not long term incentive for the community, right? And it's like the selfish gene, right? If you read the book about the selfish gene, right? Um, 
how do you balance the two? How do you uh, uh, give incentives to individuals and at the same time create incentives for communities and for billions of people to switch away from the TradFi platforms into these platforms? That's what we're doing, right? Building the bridge between TradFi, CFi, and DeFi, right? Celsius X is the bridge between CFi and DeFi. So uh, we have a lot of content about this uh, on our website, on our YouTube channel, on CelsiusX.io. Uh, so we have definitely a lot of different places to go to and see these things. And uh, it's late at night, so I got to hop off. But definitely, um, um, again, look for the stuff that I just mentioned and dig into the details. And if you're a coder, again, a lot of this stuff is open, open source, so you can repurpose it you can expand on it you can improve it uh you can collaborate with us uh the celsius x team the the different parts of the chain link team that's working on the stuff again all of that we have hackathons to do all these things and uh we'd love to have uh, many of you join us if you're techie um or if you think your promotion you 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 know a marketing guy you or or, or a lady you want to come and help us with on the marketing side, all of that, all the stuff we're doing uh, needs more publicity and more awareness. And uh, all the bright minds that are leaving these giant companies and coming to crypto are going to recognize that this is the right way. Even Vitalik, I think, recently published several uh, op-eds talking about how we need to combine uh, some centralization and some decentralization to solve this cross-chain the CCIP, the, the proof of reserves, the uh, proof of community, rewards explorer, all these things are one uh, thing. They're all pieces of one thing that's supposed to deliver uh, more and more reliability and more and more transparency to everything we're doing. Thank you, guys. We definitely broke the record tonight. We got to almost 700 uh, 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 people joining us. And uh, obviously, again, uh, not happy about the the topic, wish we could talk about positive things and not how somebody's trying to bring down um, Tarot UST. But uh, again, I'm, I have the Lone Queen here taking over for me and you're in great hands with Scott, Zach and Josh and everybody else who joined us today and uh, Plan C and everybody else and uh, Cellcat. So we'll see you guys on Friday on the AMA. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Have a good night, Alex. If you guys aren't already, make sure you're following Alex Mashinsky, our CEO. <clears throat> and like I say every week, uh, we, myself, Zach, and Scott work very hard to uh, keep these rooms and this open dialogue going for you guys. Uh, no matter if the news is bad or the news is good, we are always here. So make sure you're following myself, Zach, and Scott. Plan C and Cellcat are great community members. And Tal the Lone Queen is uh, always in your corner in these dark times. So make sure you're following her.